sorry to bring back uh, bad memories, but we haven't talked to you since the, the Olympics. Just uh, what was the, <laughs> like that whole fallout like? Is you obviously had to foul out uh, last night? Uh, I would say it's a good memory. I won't say it's a bad memory. Uh, it uh, it definitely sucked for one, uh, not to go, but I mean, I, I mean, I couldn't. That's out of everybody's control. It could have happened to anybody. Uh, it was an exciting opportunity for sure. Um, that Sean Ford and Jerry Colangelo, you know, kind of granted me. And I was a part of USA Basketball since I was 15, and you know, to have that opportunity to play on the national team was a dream come true. You know, um, not everybody has that opportunity, and you know, not everybody is given that. You know, and so many players are more than deserving of being on the team. It's very tough to pick, what, 12 guys to go over there and win a win a gold medal for your country. So um, I was just thrilled to be a part of the team. Um, I was honored for the role I had and, you know, for the things I was able to contribute, you know, during the exhibition time. Um, I'll, I'll have an opportunity in the future, hopefully in Paris, to be able to go uh, in the next three years. So I keep it alive. Uh, but on the flip side, I had a lot of family adversity during that time, too, that, you know, I was able to actually be with my family during that time. So it kind of, it was a blessing in disguise in a lot of ways. So that's why I said it was a good memory, not bad. Fred, kind of going off of that, um, how do you feel going into the season? Where are you as a player, as a leader on this team? And like you said, as a kind of a family man as well. I'm excited. I'm definitely excited. Um, it's definitely fun to be able to get back, kind of get back to normal a little bit. Um, it's, it's a fun year for us. We have pretty much a new team, a lot of new faces, new coach, new system. Um, you know, so I'm definitely excited for the changes we'll have, and I'm excited for the depth that we have at each position now too. Um, so it's an exciting year. Definitely bummed to lose Russ, you know, who's a, you know, we all know he's a first ballot hall of famer. Um, but at the end of the day, to be able to see the pieces we got back, you know, um, the depth and the experience too, I think that'll help us out tremendously moving forward. So. Uh, you know, definitely will be some adjustments along the way. It won't be, everything won't be glitter and gold, obviously, when we come out the gate, but uh, I think I like the pieces we can work with, for sure. And sorry, I do not want to ask this question. Are you vaccinated? Oh, I am not vaccinated. No, I'm not. Do you care to share why? Personal reason. Okay. Yeah. Get this out of my hand. <laughs> Brad, with the uh, with the off season being so short, I know you guys, you in particular, every week off season work on something to improve your game. So, with the off season being as, as short as it was, what was it that you were working on to come back this year as even a better player? Uh, I really focused on my body um, because I played a lot of basketball this summer. Whether I mean from the season right into USA, and then. I was not being able to go, but I still was putting some miles on my body during the summer and then having to jump right back into working out after COVID and not being able to work out for a week or two. So that was definitely, that was tough too. So uh, I think more than, more than anything, just getting my body back, you know, to the shape it was in at the end of the year and throughout the year. Uh, you know, my game is, is all about confidence. Obviously, I continue to work on it and continue to, um, you know, try to perfect the things that, you know, that, help me have success on the floor. Uh, but a big part of that is my body and my availability. So um, if, as long as I'm on the floor, I feel like I'm confident I can do, I can do a lot of things out there. Brad, how do you, how do you think you've uh, changed as, as, as so much a leader on this team now? I mean, Tommy mentioned the other day, maybe even coaching your AAU team that uh, mm -hmm. you know, changed your approach or thoughts. Uh, just, just how have you changed as you prepare for this season? Well, I've always told coaches this, like I have a newfound respect for them in coaching because my kids drive me nuts. Um, so it's it's definitely uh, it's definitely fun to be on that side and also not fun because I'm like, okay, I see my coach is yelling at us. I see why he's like, okay, you guys don't get it. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's it's propelled me for this position. You know, I'm I'm a young old head. Like, if that makes sense, you know, this is year 10 for me. So I'm definitely excited about the experience I have and the knowledge that I can just pass down and instill the guys. And uh, we have guys who've won rings on our team now, too. So we put all that together. It's not just me just running the ship. You know, we have a lot of guys who who are vocal leaders who, you know, who have won, too. So I respect that part of it and, and everybody's um, ability to contribute to our team. So I'm looking forward to the shoes I have to feel. They're definitely big ones. But. You know, I think I've prepared myself for the last 10 years for this, for sure.
Good morning, Brett. How are you? Great. How are you? Two part question. Mm -hmm. With you being the leader of this team and whatever the uh, NBA mandates and guidelines are going to come back, do you feel a pressure to be vaccinated, to be available for your team? And the second part, is there any scenario in your mind in which you do plan on maybe getting vaccinated? Uh, one, I don't feel pressure. Um, I don't think you can pressure anybody to making a decision about their body or what they put into their body. Um, and I mean, I, we can have this conversation about a lot of different topics besides vaccines too. Uh, but yeah, you can't necessarily force anybody or, you know, kind of, you know, say it's time for a vaccine. Uh, I think you kind of let people come into their own about it. Do they do their research when they feel comfortable? They do it. I, I, I definitely think about it for sure. Um, I mean, with the guidelines that the league makes and everything that the protocols are doing, they, they kind of make it difficult on us to where they kind of force us in a way to want to get it. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's I, I talk it over with my family and we make a decision that we think is best for us, just like the rest of the world. Um, we talked to Tommy a few times this offseason, and during one of those sessions, he said that the moment he can offer you a new contract, he will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the same chance he had last time. Uh, just as you get closer to that date, uh, how are you feeling? How's, how's the feel side of things? Uh, it's just the same as always. You know, it's, it's always going to be what is he going to do? What is he, you know, I, I leave that to Mark and Tommy and Ted. Like, I just, you guys figure it out. I come out here and hoop and um and do what I do obviously I have some say so on that but um you know I, I don't worry about it I know it's coming up in a few days but um my biggest thing is getting us off going to a good start you know we worry about the the contract and the money and all that later I'll let them deal with it um when the time comes for sure I got all year to sign up too so I'm not in a rush Come on, Mary, figure it out. You're just smiling at us. <laughs> um Brett you got a lot of guys on this team that you not necessarily don't know super well but have relationships with around your kind of same age so you came up together what's kind of what do you feel like so far can you tell the identity of this team what's it going to be like how's the chemistry developing from that kind of point of view I don't think that's what we have to figure out honestly um like you said I haven't played with a lot of the guys but playing against them and um you know us kind of jumbling it you know jumbling the team together like you you can kind of have an idea of what we can be like and the type of team we can be. You know, we'll definitely be athletic. We'll be fast. You know, we'll be a push to pace type team. Um, definitely athletic. We have versatility at, you know, multiple positions. So it's very curious to see what our true identity will be. Obviously, I know Coach Ansel wants to emphasize a strong defensive presence better than what we had. And uh, I know he's a genius in, on the defensive end, too. So, um, you know, we're just excited for, for that part of it, but it'll definitely be, it'll be an adjustment. It won't be, like I said before, just picture perfect from the get go. We will have to figure that out as we go. Speaking of coach on so, uh, what kind of conversations have you had with him leading up to this point? And, and what do you think about the team going forward with him as the leader? Uh, one, I'm excited for him. I'm excited for the opportunity he gets, um, you know, it's his first, his first go at it, you know, and uh, he's, he's definitely put in the time and the work and, uh, you know, he has the credibility for it. So in that, in that realm, I'm, I'm more than happy for him. And, you know, he has an opportunity, um, you know, to come to a place where his father was, you know, a big, huge, you know, forefather of this organization. So, uh, you know, that that's definitely exciting for him. And I'm, I'm excited for the opportunity he gets to be able to grow his own wings outside of, outside of his dad. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, he's, he's a great down to earth guy. He's very, he's very humble, um, soft spoken. And, um, but at the same time, I think he has a little fire to him. He has a little fire ears to him. So uh, I'm definitely excited to work with him, um, you know, to play for him and, and definitely be coached by him. So, uh, you know, hopefully we can, we can get this thing going and, and keep it going for sure. Coach on the bench and uh, we appreciate so much your defense. I think it's because I'm on Zoom. There's, there's, there's so many shooters or more shooters on this roster now, Mike. Thank you. Oh, no, only the host can share it because screen mirroring is considered. Oh, he's 100% right. Uh, you know, I won't have to be able to make every play. Um, just got another vaccine one, sorry. It's, you know, after uh, press conferences last year, you always encouraged people to mask up and it seemed like you took COVID very seriously. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people would say that to take COVID seriously, like just get the vaccine. I know it's a personal decision and all, but 
uh, are you surprised that the way I guess one what's like the justification there or like how, how do you kind of manage that like still taking COVID seriously but just not getting the vaccine and then also this idea of like with NBA players I don't know if you read the Rolling Stones article over the weekend but that there seems to be like for a lack of a better word an anti-vax herd among NBA players I don't know give a damn about the herd or whatever it is um every player every person in this world is going to make their own decision for themselves um I would like an explanation to you know people with vaccines why are they still getting COVID if that's something that we are supposed to highly be protected from like that's funny that oh it reduces your chances of going to the hospital it doesn't eliminate anybody from getting COVID right so everybody, is everybody in here vax? I would assume, right? So you all can still get COVID, right? I'm less likely to die or go to the hospital. Okay, but you can still get COVID, right? So, and you can still pass it along with the vax, right? So, so I'm not asking, I'm just asking so, the question. Oh, for sure. And so like having COVID back around the Olympics, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but having it change your opinion one way or another, like, did it kind of reemphasize that it means the vaccine? No, 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 that didn't, that wasn't the case. I mean, yeah, I had it, but that doesn't mean I can't get it again, you know? I mean, it's no different than somebody with the vaccine. Like, I can, yes, I developed the antibodies for it, so my chances will be less likely now as well, right? But it's still a possibility I may get it. Just like there are players and coaches and staff who are vax and missing camp right now because of it. So mm -hmm. we'll take some questions from Zoom, Neil. Hey Brad, good to see you. Um Pop and Draymond and people were calling you after they won the gold medal, you know, congratulate you for what you were able to provide and help in that facet. Um, Tommy described you as, you know, you were going to take a very defensive standpoint on that team. What are some of the things you learned from there that you think that you might be able to implement here with the Wizards now? Uh, man, it's tough. I mean, that's, those are, it's like, it can, and that's two different teams. It's kind of like not fair in a lot of ways because you're, you're comparing an all-star team to, you know, regular NBA teams. You can't, you know, the mentality and the approach to them are totally different. Obviously, you respect every, you know, star that is there, you know, their approach and their leadership and how everybody is able to sacrifice and take a step back for the man next to them. Like, everybody on that team was able to score 30 points, but we didn't need everybody to score 30, you know. So everybody can go get 10 assists, 10 rebounds, but we didn't necessarily need everybody to do that. Um so on that scale, it was just, you know, more or less kind of really getting a feel for, you know, how it is playing with other stars, you know, other guys who are really good and talented and how do we sacrifice for the benefit of the team and coming together to win. Um, obviously, you have that within your your, your teams in the NBA, but, um, you know, at the same time, our team is definitely, we're built up a little bit different than, than USA team, but I definitely carry over some of the, you know, the leadership qualities and, um, just attention to detail from Coach Pop and just a lot of the other guys and how they approach the game. Like you definitely respect that and you you try to uh, implement them into your in your own for sure. Out of curiosity, do you know if you might be receiving a medal and or if not, you know, what it just it mean to you that, you know, people are reaching out and say, hey, thank you. Uh, I will not receive a medal. Um, that is, I mean, that's a rule. I didn't I didn't play a game in the Olympics. So, I mean, I, I respect that 100 percent. Um, and there's no ill will for me. Like, I'm not pissed off about it. I'm not mad. You know, it's it's out of my control. It's out of everybody's control. Because, um, like I said before, on the backside, it was a, it was a blessing in the skies in a lot of ways. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I won't get one, but I'm definitely happy for the team. And it, it meant the world to me to, you know, to hear from Pop, hear from Jason, hear from Draymond, hear from all the other guys. And, um, you know, them be excited for me like I was there, you know. So that was, that was definitely cool, though, for sure. Thanks, Brad. Mm -hmm. Hey, Brad. Good to see you again. 
Um, when you are trying to focus in on the identity of the team, how does it correlate to maybe having a baby and not having the name ready until the baby is born? And then you see the personality <laughs> of the child and then you can evolve from there in terms of the actual identity. How do you compare that to what the team is going through right now in terms of nailing down what you want as the team's identity? Uh I mean, that's tough. I mean, because in a, in a way, that's kind of how we are. It's like, we're not babies, but that's a good analogy to have. Uh, you know, we definitely, we kind of have to figure it out, you know, how it is on the floor. You can't just necessarily just, you know, throw a lot of talented guys together and think it'll work, you know? So there has to be, obviously, we have to respect coaches, uh, you know, his, his staff, one, and then uh, two, his system. You know, we have to respect everything that he wants to put in and implement into our team. And we have to buy into that. You know, I think that's that's the other key. You know, as long as we buy into that, I think I think we'll be able to find, you know, our, our identity relatively quickly. You know, and that's that's the reason for preseason and these exhibition games um, and camp, you know, for us to be able to, you know, figure that out, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis and challenge each other, you know, in practice and then, you know, on the court, build that camaraderie to take it out on another team. So it'll be some time. I'll, I'll, I'll go with the baby approach, Christy. <laughs> And just one last thing for me, with um, Wes Unsell Jr. holding the reins as the head coach, what do you see from him? I know he was here 10 years ago. Is that your rookie year? Did you guys overlap at the beginning when you came here to D.C.? No. No, no, okay. I don't think so. No, I think he was gone when I got here. Okay. But just with that, um, just when you said you're an old young head or a young old head, whatever you said, mm -hmm. um, is it about the coaching of the AAU teams or is it about fatherhood that you were talking about when you said kids don't really understand what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> coaching. Yeah, it's a, it's okay. a coaching. Yeah, it's <laughs> My boys, my boys understand more than my AU kids do. My <laughs> AU kids are frustrating sometimes. Uh, no, but no, it goes both ways. No, my boys give me a hard time too. Uh, but I mean, I am, this is, I'm 28 years old. This is year 10 for me. You know, that's kind of a young old head, you know, in a, in a lot of ways. I have a lot of years, but I'm still young. I still have a lot of fight and, and game left in me. Um, you know, so I'm excited in that realm and, um, you know, I'm not, I don't treat myself as a young guy. I'm very mature. I feel like I'm, I'm mature and, um, you know, it'd definitely be an adjustment, you know, being called the OG and being called the oldest guy on the team and all that. But it's, it's what I've prepared myself for. You know, I feel like, you know, learning over the years from John and Trev and Drew Gooden and Al Harrington and all my vets, and Jared Dudley and all these guys, like I've, these guys were my vets, you know, and I had great vets that I can, you know, learn that I had the opportunity to learn from. And now I can instill that stuff into my own team. So uh, I'm excited. Thank you. Hey, B. G Money. How you doing? Hey, um, you mentioned that you worked a lot on, um, your body this summer from a skill standpoint uh, and you and you played a lot of hoop from a skill standpoint anything sp specific that you worked on whether it was your range uh your three ball you know your ball handling you've gotten better every year with specific skills and um obviously you're at an elite level right now but what are some of the you know the basketball stuff that you worked on uh Honestly, everything, you know, me, I'm always, I always feel like nothing's perfect. I always, you know, want to improve everything, ball handling. And, but I would say I paid a lot of attention to my range um, and trying to extend it. Um, you know, I face a lot of double teams and traps and um, overloaded defenses. And so one way to keep them honest is one, shooting deep threes and, you know, two, getting off the ball earlier. So working on my reads and pick and rolls and, uh, obviously, having Coach Unsell put us in positions will, will definitely help too. But uh, I'm definitely been working on the range and ball handling and constantly improving the game. Nothing's perfect, G. You know me. Everything has to keep getting better. Gotcha. Hey, B. Um, depth obviously is an important factor. You've been here for a while. 
Um, and on paper, you know, with the moves that they've made based on the Russell Westbrook trade, this looks on paper like a real deep team. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that because chemistry is a hard thing to, to, to put a finger on and with every NBA team. But it looks like, you know, you got shooters, you got rebounders. Uh, is this the deepest team or one of the deepest teams that you've played on since you've been here? Oh, for sure. Um, it definitely is. Um, and like you said, is is I've said it earlier, like you can't, we have depth, like we have playmakers, we have shooters, we have bigs, but we can't just throw it out there and think it's going to work. You know, we have to figure it out, you know, how we mesh and how we gel the right way. Um, but it feels good knowing that we have the pieces we need, you know, to be able to compete on a nightly basis to win games. So um, it's just a matter of us, one, buying into, like I said, buying into the system, buying into bettering each other on a daily, creating that competition in camp. Um, because I think that, that that carries over to the games. You know, we, we create that competition in camp. You know, we're, we know that we're ready to go to war and go to battle with our teammate when it's time. So um, I think the camaraderie and the competition, the depth that we have, I think it's, I think it's beneficial in so many ways. Thanks. Scott. Hey, Brad, Scott Abraham, ABC7. Uh, good to see you as always. Um, obviously, you know, the whole vaccination debate, uh, that's your personal choice, um, but this is probably not gonna be the last time you're gonna get asked these questions. Are you worried that this is gonna be maybe a distraction for you, the team going forward, and how do you plan on handling this? Because obviously um, in this COVID world, everybody wants to talk about the vaccination question. Yeah. Uh, one, it won't be any pressure from me or from my teammates or anybody. Two, um, I don't think it'll be a distraction. Um, we're here to play basketball and do that at the highest level. And, you know, we have protocols and things in place to make sure that we're taken care of and we're tested, you know, regularly. So, um, no, no, I think, uh, I think we're good. I guess, do you understand, I guess, both sides of the coin, the perspective, because uh, of this question and of this debate, um, obviously it's not an easy situation for you because you're role model in, in the spotlight. Um, I guess, do you understand, I guess, the whole, the whole thing, the whole picture? Yeah, I have family. My mom and dad are vaccinated. My older brothers are vaccinated. My sister-in-law is vaccinated. I, have, I know people that I have people that are very close to me that are vaccinated just as well as I have people that are close to me and related to me that are not. So it's a, it's a fine line. It's a personal choice between everybody. Uh, 100%. Like, I understand both sides of it. Like, I understand that there is a percentage of people who can get very sick. I didn't get sick. I didn't get sick at all. I lost my smell. But that's, that was it for me. Everybody's going to react different. Everybody's going to take it differently. I mean, some people have bad reactions to the vaccine. Nobody likes to talk about that. Um, and what happens if one of our players gets the vaccine and they can't play after that or they have complications after that? Because there are cases like that. But I feel like we don't talk about those as heavily because they're so minute, maybe. But, I mean, they are existent. So it's like I said before, we can, we can talk all day about it. Everybody's going to have their own opinion. Everybody's going to have their own timing and um, comfort of when they feel like they want to meet those criteria or needs or feel like they want to go through with getting the vaccine. Appreciate it, Brad. Thank you. No problem. Hey, Brad, um, you talked about wanting to build that chemistry. Have you guys had any opportunity off the court to start building chemistry together? Uh, for sure. I mean, we, I've hung out with a few guys. I've, I've had a few guys over to my house and uh we've we've hung out we've gone out to eat um we actually have a team dinner tonight um so it, it's just we seldomly we we do things uh once i actually went to the giants um washington game a couple weeks ago so that was we just do little things to kind of build it up and coach wanted us all here you know after labor day and uh everybody's commitment to doing that was was great you know and be able to have everybody um, buy into that you know that's always a good sign um, and you know obviously we have we'll have the year to continue to build that up but you know so far we've we've done a pretty solid job of that you know my last question is 
Um, can you just share some of your personal goals with us this season? Ooh, I always get better. Uh, I always get better. But what is that? I don't have numbers, honestly. Um, just obviously, just continue to push yourself, continue to be better, be a better team. You know, I want to win. I want to win the right way and do it here. And and I think we have enough, you know, so it's just we we have to get it done and, and continue to push and do that. So I know I'll push myself. I hold myself to a high standard. I criticize myself more than anybody. Um, so I know I'll be ready to go. I just have to make sure that my team is, is locked in and we're ready to go on a nightly basis. Thanks, Brad. Last question, Clinton. Good, B. Thank you. Um, would you say this offseason is the most you've played five on five in your 10 off seasons or so in the league? And if so, why did you decide to really go all out with like five on five basketball? Because I remember like talking back a few years ago, you said you're not really into offseason basketball and stuff like that. You're more like in the gym working your own grind. I would say, I want to say no, but I have to say yes because of USA Basketball. But oh, yeah. I would say no on a – like, I still didn't play a lot of pickup this summer. Like, the videos just – I might have played two or three games of pickup this summer. Like, and then when we came, obviously, here in D.C., we played a little bit too. But it wasn't a lot. It still isn't a lot. Like, I don't that's – a, that's a tough one because, you know, a lot of nasty and crazy things happen in the summer, freak injuries and stuff like that. So we always try to avoid those things. But – uh, when you know you have competitive guys, you know, who go hard and know how to play the game, you know, you you, you want to get out there. You, you get out there and compete. So uh, I definitely have my moments, and that helps you get in shape because you can't – like, you sprinting is not going to get you in shape. Like, actually guarding somebody, running through screens, uh, you know, they get you in proper game shape. So, you know, doing a little bit of that in the summer helps, uh, you know, and it kind of gives you a feel for where your game is too. So those, those are my reasons of utilizing it. And forgive me if I didn't hear this as in the arena, but there was a, a report that came out this morning that Russell Westbrook tried to get you to also ask out of D.C. in that trade. Uh, would you like to comment on that or um, clear anything up or deaden that? Oh, I really want to dead it. But uh, every I mean, every this this happens every year. You guys know that like every every players are going to talk. Uh, and, you know, Russ decided he was going to do what's best for him and his family. And I wasn't there. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't in the same headspace he was. So it was, and it was a respectable decision. It wasn't like, oh man, after that, you don't want like, no, I love Russ to death. Russ, like we had a great conversation leading up to it. Many of great conversations leading up to it. Um, and he made, he made a decision that was best for him. It was definitely, it was a, we were in a place of limbo for a minute. We didn't have a coach. We didn't know what was going on. Like it was, it was definitely, it was a little, it was a little rocky, you know? So him going into his 14th year, you know, you know, his, he's looking like his time is ticking. So he wants to, you know, be on the championship contending team now. And I respected that. Like, I'm not sitting there saying we may be holding up the Larry. Like, yeah, we made some great moves. We made a lot of great moves. Um, but he, he made the decision that was best for him. So I respected it. I, I'm happy for him. Um, you know, he gets to spend his career, hopefully finish his career in LA where it's his hometown. Um, but yeah, we had, we had good combos and I'll keep them, I'll keep them between us, but, uh, you know, more or less he's there and I'm here. So. What are your initial impressions of, uh, West Ham Silk Jr. now that you're starting this, uh, player coach relationship? Um, it's going good so far, I would say, you know, we having good dialogue. Um, he's uh, opened the communication up, you know, for us to, for, for me to do so. Uh, and and I, I'm, I like that. I'm just so, so good so far. Coach has said that the player relationship is one of the things that's most important to him. How has he reached out to you? Did you start kind of over the summer? But what's it like having that open communication? Uh, uh, he started when, uh, when he got, when I got traded. Um, when the trade happened, uh, um, I think it was a day after it happened. He, I got a text and a phone call. You know, we talked a little bit just, you know, to welcome me. You know, he was excited. I was excited. Uh, I actually told him I was waiting on his phone call, you know. <laughs> um, but it, it's, it's, it's been good, you know, just 
knowing I can just reach out to Coach uh, at, at any point, you know, and we just, we can talk about anything, you know. Uh, and he he does the same, you know. He reach out just to check on us, you know, just to see how we doing, uh, which is good, you know. Uh, and it's been good. I know we've asked you before, kind of where you fit or what you might bring to the team. Now that you've actually gotten on the court with the guys and kind of see what there is to offer, where do you feel like um, your role is? And then also with the leadership on this team, you're obviously one of the more experienced guys. You got a lot of kind of young or, or mid mid career guys. Where do you feel like that shakes out? Uh, I feel like my 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 main role uh, is going to be uh, to be more vocal leader. I mean, I, I would say. I mean, I know I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna compete every night, you know, three and D. Well, that's my game. You know, I'm gonna add a little more that I've been working on this summer, not too much. Um, but um, just gonna bring the competitiveness, uh, that leadership. Uh, and, and just a, a championship men mentality here, you know, uh, try to get guys on one accord, you know, do things on the court and off the court, you know, together as much as possible. Um, I feel like um, if we can build that chemistry uh, to become a unit, you know, early, you know, it'll be easier for us to play on the court. First thing is, oh, uh, welcome to the team. We're Thank you. Um, you mentioned the championships and, and having the chance to play you know, with the Lakers, with LeBron, with AD. What did you take away from that experience that you think you can bring here? Uh, I got to, I'll just say, uh, just, you know, trying to build that chemistry. You know, I felt like uh, that championship team that we had, you know, we we pretty much did everything together. You know, it was from down from dinner, you no know, movies, you no, know, just to uh, invite to like guy's house, you know, uh, things in that nature, you know, it, um, I feel like the more we can just spend time together, get to know each other, you know, know each other weaknesses on and off the court, you know, I feel like we, we're gonna, we, it's gonna be a good brotherhood over here, you know, uh, everybody knows each other, you know, we can crack on each other, you know, and still take it, you know, and laugh with it, you know, and not be, not take it personal. Uh, I feel like that's gonna be, you know, key for us, you know, as far as just trying to get to know each other, you know, it's, it's it's here now. No, we gotta gotta go. So speaking of that, with the relationship, it's been talked about a lot. Your relationship with Brad and how far back it goes. If you can, just tell us what is that relationship like? And how, how did it form? Uh, I mean, when we was teenagers, you know, through through the AAU circuit, uh, I never played with him. I always played against him. You know, uh, and that was even uh, when we got to college. Uh, then just as far as like going to all like all American games, um, Jordan Brand Classic, you know, just just being there, you know, seeing him, you know, we we talked almost every camp we seen each other. You know, he lived in St. Louis and I was uh in Greenville, but you know, we didn't get to see each other that much uh outside of that, uh, outside of basketball, but we we grew a friendship, you know, through through basketball. Uh and it, and it just carried on. Uh yeah. It's, it's special. No, I feel like the relationship we have is special. You no, know, he know me, I know him, and you know, we know we're not to crack on each other when, when we need it. <laughs> when we just needed just you know, someone to just talk to. Uh, no, he's uh, he's always been there, you know. Uh, and I, I just can't wait to play with him. You know, it's gonna it's gonna be fun. I told him that last night. It's, it's gonna be fun, man. Take some pressure off him. Uh, I mean, just, I like the young team that we have, I would say, I mean, even though I'm young, uh, but I, I like it, you know, it's a, it's a lot of guys that want to compete. Uh, um, and, and just gonna have that competitive mentality. Uh, so everybody is hungry, um, and I, I play with most of these guys: Spencer, you know, Trez, Kuz, uh, and just knowing Brad, I, I just know like that that mentality that that we gonna bring. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun. Just to just to play out there, you know. We're gonna and, and making it fun, you know. Just uh, not worrying about too much, you know. Taking it game by game. You know, uh, you know, we we set team goals and, and we we try to reach it together. 
want to ask you about uh, perimeter defense. It's kind of part of your reputation that you become here. And um, we've seen some guys with the Wizards kind of struggle doing that over the years, you know, whether it be young guys with officiating. And it seems like you kind of need to learn how to do that as a better. What have you learned throughout your career about like what it takes to be a good wing defender in the NBA? First off, lead the referee slow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, just try to, uh, I mean, I feel like from my experience, me, you know, um, uh, personnel, you know, you got to watch a lot of film on, on who you guard or who your matchup is going to be, um, know their weaknesses, you know, try to force them to do much of that as possible. Uh, no, you're not, um, not going to make them do it as much because they, they great players as well. Uh, just, and for me, I just try to, you know, contain, you know, stay in front. You know, if I can get stay in front of my guy, I can get a great contest. So that's my 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 go-to. And then what I, I look for is mainly just his jersey number, you know, in the middle of his chest. It's not gonna move. So if I'm watching that, like, you know, it, it, it helps me out a, a little bit, you know. I got a little tricks, you know, a lot of stuff that I, I use, you know, to to make that happen. Uh, but just, uh, I would say just more, more, more personnel and watching film, you know, would be the best, you know, way to like learn a player like, and get to know their tendencies and stuff. What should we know about Kyle Kuzma that maybe people don't immediately know since you obviously know him better than any of us? Um, he's very fashionable. <laughs> <laughs> I know that, but I mean something that you, uh did you know he's a painter? He paints. So well, that's one thing Kuz does paint. Uh he, he showed me some paintings. He done a lot in the bubble when we was in the bubble. Um uh, actually pretty nice. Not not bad for for a starter. But I, I didn't know he could paint, you know, so it, it looked good. So I would say that's one thing. Somewhat. <laughs> not not <laughs> I wouldn't call him an artist. My my nine-year-old is an artist. Kuz, no. How about the same question about yourself? What do people not know about KCP? Mm. They don't know. It's a lot, you know, no, but uh, I would say a lot. One thing, yeah, I like to draw. Uh, that's how I taught my my son, you know, my nine year old son, how to draw a little bit. Now he's he's gotten better than I have because I stopped drawing. Uh, but uh, one thing, yeah, I mean, I say you know, I, I doodle a lot like, in my spare time, just drawing. Uh, and that's one thing me and my son have in common. Like, we we does. We, we, I sit and draw with him a lot. So, yeah, pretty much. Well, I want to say clear with my mom because I got three boys and they run every, it's, it's 24 hours. So it's always uh, nerve wracking. But I mean, I got a lot of patience though. I learned a lot of patience, you know, just, just being there, you know, just hearing it, the noise and the complaints and all that. It's a lot of patience. Was it like Criminal Minds? Is that correct? Or is that correct? Or is that correct? I love Criminal Minds. <laughs> I do. Uh, so the journey to be a better defensive team is just such a focus here. Uh, the other day, Tommy Shepard said sometimes just, you know, one or two possessions a game can, can, can change the yeah. direction of a, of a team. What, what's your philosophy on that? I'm trying to, because that's obviously part of a championship mentality. Uh, yes. You know, uh, defense does do win games. Uh, I mean, I feel like the more we we on one accord, you know, we're going to make mistakes on defense, you know, but as long as we do it at, at an effort, you know, 100 percent, you know, we, we're going to have guys covering for for that mistake. You know, and I, and, I, and I said it, you know, I said again, like once we can have that chemistry and like we can be a unit, I know I, defense is just, it's, it's going to be easy. You know, one guy makes a mistake, we got a guy helping. Then the next guy helps. You know, it, it's all a chain reaction. And the more that that chain stay together, the more the better we can be. 
probably say. We'll take a few off of Zoom, Dan. KCB, what's up, man? Um, How you hope, doing? Hope DC is treating you well. Um, curious, kind of um, when the, when the trade went down, um, did you were you surprised? Did you expect it? Um, I know your status in LA has always been sort of shaky because of the, the short term deals, and I guess any reflection on, on your time in Los Angeles. Um, uh, I mean, it wasn't a surprise. You know, it, at some point I knew it was coming. You know, because the four years I was there, I was always in trade talk. Um, so eventually I knew it was going to come. So it wasn't as a surprising, but uh, I was shocked. You know, uh, so I mean, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Did you say me? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Yes, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, when you said that you were going to take pressure off of Bradley Beal, what specifically did you mean by that? Does that mean taking some minutes away so he's hmm. more fresh down at the end of the games, or are you talking on the offensive end? Uh, that, I know that might not happen. Taking minutes. Uh, I mean, but not no, minutes, just uh, <laughs> rotational. Yeah. Rotational minutes. I mean, yeah. just um, just like you know, giving him you know that the rest he, that he need. You know, as far as like uh, I want to say he won't have to you know carry the load on the defensive end as much. You know, where he 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 has to be doing all that running around. You know, he can exert his energy on offense. Uh, you know, also you know, analyst uh of my game on offense. You know. Scoring the ball, which I I can do, you know, a lot of people don't don't know. Um, also, I am a good playmaker, uh, which a lot of people don't know as well. Uh, <laughs> uh, just I mean, just stuff here and there, man. I know, I mean, he's gonna have you know his shine. He's gonna do his thing, you know. Just just being there, you know, at the right times when he when he when he need, you know, taking that pressure there, you know, mentally, you know, off the court and on the court. Right and. With the championship mentality that you bring to the floor, what three things do you want to see materialize and evolve for the team with that in mind? Well, three things I want to see. Uh, um, I would just say uh, three things I would want to see as far as uh, you know, getting that chemistry together, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, being able to communicate with each other, you know, on and off the court, no, no matter what it is, you know, try to, you know, build that, you know, that 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 unit, um, and also just plan for plan for each other. You know, we all here to do the same job. You know, to win games. You know, uh, eventually get to that championship. You know, uh, but you know, play for each other. You know, the more we can do those three things. I feel like the better we're going to be as a team. Awesome. Thank you. Well, a couple more. Hey, KCP, uh, you talked about, you know, the brotherhood and wanting, wanting to be able to kind of self-police each other. How have you seen, you know, that work out so far, you know, early on um, in your guys' runs? And what's the key to continuing that throughout a long season? Uh, it's going to take it's going to take a lot of hard work. You know, I've been on both sides where I've had it in D. I didn't have it in Detroit, where we didn't, you know, we, we really wasn't a brotherhood, but, we, you know, we talked, you know, it wasn't as much, you know, for it to, you know, to be what, to get what we need to be, you know, and then in LA where uh, we talked every day, you know, uh, you know, we was out for dinners, you know, got invites to, you know, pretty much everything. Um, I just see, you know, us, you know, I just, that, that, just doing that, you know, commu communication is, is, is key. I, would, I just, I just want to keep saying that, you know, the more we can just talk to each other and be around each other, it's, it's going to help. KCP, how are you? Um, hey, Milwaukee last year um, added, Drew Holiday and P.J. Tucker, which brought physicality defensively to that team and, and just uh, just some rugged, ruggedness. And 
when you guys won the championship with LA, everybody talks about chemistry on offense. Uh, what is it that you noticed when the year you won a chip defensively uh, that the Lakers did that year? And what do you try to, are going to try to bring to the Wizards with that in mind? Um, like I said earlier, where like uh, the championship run we had, the defensive side was of, it, it was that chain reaction, you know. Uh, you know, everybody was on the same page. Everybody knew what it took, you know, to 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 get that championship. You know, we was all on the same page. You know, we was gonna we was gonna if if my teammate my man got beat, if he got beat, you know, it was somebody there to help him. You know, and then it was someone to help me. You know, to help the helper. So like we all knew what it took, and then you know. Also having AD, you know, and LeBron on your team helps. Uh, <laughs> but you know, they 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 leadership, you know, they were they was on it every day, you know, from from the start, from training camp, they was on it. They they they, they preach, you know, one accord, one accord, one accord. We got to be on the same page. Everybody got to play for each other, you know. Everybody got to have that that same drive, you no know, championship only. Uh, and when everybody bought into that, you know, it, it, it changed everything. You know, we became the number one defensive team, uh, regular season and playoffs. So uh, the more we can do that, you know, I feel like we can do it here too. You know, we got a lot of young guys that wants to compete. What are your early impressions of DC? Because the last time we talked to you, you said you were kind of looking forward to settling in and, and living in the city. Just kind of uh, how's it been getting settled as you start training? Um, you know, it's been great. Um, I got my house in order now. Um, you know, I haven't really done much uh, exploring or, you know, being adventurous. You know, I kind of really just been, um, you know, where I live and, you know, to the gym. So, um, you know, because it's a lot moving. This is my first time, you know, being in a situation to really get traded and, um, you know, going through it and that whole experience. So, you know, getting my house in order, that's been uh, that's been good, and um, you know, just trying to adjust into you know this pace of life because it's uh, it's much different. We uh, had a long conversation with Bradley Beal earlier about uh, vaccines and just how much of a deal they're going to be this NBA season. Just what do you kind of make of how things are developing so far in terms of it, it playing such a factor? Well, I think um, I think at the end of the day, you know, no one really knows uh, how things are going to go. You know, America doesn't know. The NBA doesn't necessarily know because this is, you know, un, uncharted territory. We've never, you know, in, in our time in society, haven't really gone through, um, you know, this type of, you know, viral type of situation. So, um, you know, I think um, NBA has done, you know, the best job they could in the past going from the bubble and also last season of incorporating, you know, certain guidelines and uh, procedures and precautions. So, um and as you saw, if you follow along to those um, precautions, you know, they slowly, slowly change. Um, you know, some change drastically overnight. Um, you know, we started with 2,000 and 3,000 fans, and some states had 7,000, 8,000 overnight. So, you know, that kind of just tells you that, um, you know, it's, a, it's kind of a waiting game and, you know, just figuring out as, you know, we go along with life. So, Um, I mean, that's personal. It's personal. I mean, yeah, so. Mm -hmm. um, and we kind of asked you this before when we first talked to you after you got traded, but now that you've kind of seen these guys out on the floor, what do you feel like your role is going to be? You guys are obviously kind of without Rui really right now, mm -hmm. so that might affect, you know, something on down the line. We're not sure about that, but what do you feel like you want to get done on this team? What do you feel like you can get done? Uh, I want to be a leader. Um, you know, I think, um, you know, being around some of the greatest players to ever play, um, and, and really studying them and really watching them, um, their, their every move. You know, when I think about guys like um, LJ and um, Rondo and, you know, how they're able to just connect with everyone on a certain type of level, you know, whether that's friendship, business work, whatever. And uh, to really just try to enhance that and make everyone better. So, um, you know, <clears throat> that's just my main thing. I want to just come out and, um, you know, bring to this organization in this city is a winning culture. and. Um, just that lead, leadership from a, um, a winner's mentality. So, 
Kyle, uh, Justin Kutcher, I get the playback play on TV. So first of all, welcome to the team. Thank you. Um, you can clear one thing up. How tall are you? Um, 6'10". Okay. Yeah, 6'10". Mm -hmm. uh, your skill set, you have, I think people can, people know that you have a certain skill set and it's very, very special. Mm -hmm. When LeBron was injured, you were able to shine. Now coming here, it's the first time you've been traded. Mm -hmm. You're getting used to it, but is it in a weird, weird way you look at this as a blessing in disguise where you can finally show what you can do at 6'10"? For a team? Uh, yeah, you know, um, it got to the point where, you know, um, you know, been, I was in L.A. for, you know, four years, four marvelous leaguers. Um, got a lot accomplished uh, coming in as a rookie sophomore player and, um, you know, had a certain type of role and uh, really expanded and really, um, really developed really well. And then um, Anthony Davis comes and, um, you know, rightfully so, you know, heading to the bench to a, a smaller type of role to sacrifice and win a championship, which we did. And um, that was uh, that was the ultimate blessing in disguise for me because uh, I was able just to learn, you know, how many how many young players can, you know, come in this league and learn from arguably the greatest player and, you know, top five, top seven, whatever you want to call it, power forward ever. And, um, you know, those are just some of the memories and, and things I always keep for the rest of my life, um, you know, because I've learned so much just watching them and trying to mimic them. And, you know, whether that's, you know, offensively from a standpoint, being a playmaker like LJ or, um, you know, really just wanting to become a good defender like how AD is. So, um, you know, those guys helped me out a lot. And for me, um, you know, wanting to get traded and and, and being in a, a type of situation where I can, you know, really spread my wings and, and uh, develop at, you know, a certain type of trajectory, um, you know, that I was on to prior. So, um, yeah, no, it's great. It's exciting. And, you know, obviously I know how to play the game of basketball and I'm just excited to uh, continue to improve and, um, you know, just get better every single day. So. Kyle, uh, also welcome to DC. I'm Dave Johnson. I did a radio play about play. Um, you talk about culture and, and chemistry and things like that. Mm -hmm. as, as you've experienced success, is the approach off the court always as important as the approach on the court? Because everybody's talented in the NBA. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. You know, I think that uh, in this game of basketball, you know, it's probably eighty percent mental, uh, twenty percent. You know, from a physical talent standpoint, you know, everybody in this league can be a star. Um, it's all about you know, kind of like fit and opportunity, right? So, um, you know, off court plays a big role into that. You know, because you're only on the basketball court, you know, two two to three to four hours a day. So, what are you doing the rest of the day? So. You know, whether that's taking care of your body, um, you know, getting getting massages, being in the cold tub, um, you know, stretching, um, you know, going over mental uh, rehearsals of, you know, um, what you what, what your plan um, for that night, um, you know, getting ready for practice, you know, getting ready just to, you know, have a certain type of energy and spunk, you know, it, it all it all takes account and it's all important when you're trying to become um, a great athlete. You tweeted yesterday. I'm assuming you were watching the Lions game. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and I'm not a Lions fan, no. Oh, you are. I retired. <laughs> yeah. Well, the team here is not much better. Um, so, <laughs> um, so I, I'm just curious uh, to see if you want to expand on that. Just like, what do you like about NFL uh, player turn media analysts? I mean, we're talking about us, none of us play the game. Mm -hmm. uh, just how they, I don't know, I guess, what, what kind of sparked that for you? You know, uh, I'm, I'm a big football fan. I watch football all the time. I grew up playing football. And, um, you know, so I, I, I'd say, you know, I, I'm pretty in tune with that sport. And, um, you know, from all type of angles, um, you know, from watching the game, but also, you know, growing up watching, um, you know, sports channels. And, um, you know, looking, looking at certain type of um, reporters, right? And, and not certain type of reporters, more so, uh, you know, how each sport is, you know, completely different from the way um, they're talked about, right? So if you look at football, if you look at guys, um, you know, all the great players that turn into analysts, uh, they do a phenomenal job of, of really, um, you know, teaching the game and, uh, and, 
and, and just reporting it from a standpoint of, you know, true um, craftsmanship. You know, that's the word I like to use because um, dude, they're straight to the point. You know, they're 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 not um, you know they're not bashing people. They're not trying to get jokes off. I mean, they might get jokes off, but you know, a certain type of way. And um, they just do a, a great job of really, um, you know, making sure the the average fan that doesn't really know much about the sport um, to educate them on. And uh, I think that's something that um, a lot of uh, NBA guys that go into the analyst world, um, they could do a better job of. They could definitely do a better job of because, um, you know, basketball is a great sport. Football is a great sport. But, you know, the average fan, you know, they might just only know about, you know, points per game and that's all they care about. But, you know, if you look at football, you know, um, you look at a guy like Teddy Bruschi or uh, Randy Moss, um, I was just watching them this Sunday. So, um, you know, they, they just do a great job of just talking about nuances of the sport. You know, they may talk about how great offensive linemen is or how great somebody's blocking or a certain detail of how, um, you know, uh, defensive coverages are. They really, really break it down. And I, I feel like um, the great sport of basketball is missing that. And um, I think it would be very important to, you know, kind of get that for the future of the game. Sounds like you're a mess. Say it again. No, no. Um, no, no. Uh, KCB is talking about your painting a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure you've talked about it before, but when and how did you get into that? How, would you call yourself an artist? You stopped right short of calling you like an artist. Or... Well, I mean, I, I think that uh, <laughs> I think that uh, life is all about your reference point. You know what I mean? So. You know, it's, it's it's cliche to say to each his own, but it's true. You know, if uh, you may like something, I may not. So, you know, for me, being an artist is something different than what you may call artists. Like you may think an artist is someone that is, uh, you know, professional or top notch. But, um, you know, for me, art comes in all types of forms of life. So, you know, that could be, you know, me just painting. But, you know, I like fashion, you know, and I like to, you know, wear, wear a certain type of silhouettes and clothes. And, um, you know, that's that's a certain artistry about it, too. You know, no, no different than basketball. You know, Kyrie Irving is an artist in the sport of basketball. So um, I would call myself an artist just because I like to, you know, I have meaning to it, and that's what artists do. Kyle, uh, going back to your talk about football and analysis, mm -hmm. I was lucky enough a couple of years ago to have Karan Butler as one of our analysts. Mm -hmm. And Karan talked about his time with Kobe. Yep. And he said he, the first time on an airplane, he went back and he asked Kobe what he was doing. And Kobe was watching the film. Yep. And Kobe's like, have a seat. And he just formed a relationship with Kobe based on that one thing. He said Kobe taught him so much. Mm -hmm. Was there something that you learned about watching film, about preparation mm -hmm. from LeBron or AD or someone else that just has stuck with you and helped you propel to where you are right now? Uh, yeah, no, for sure. I'm a, I'm a film addict. Um, and I, and I, I wasn't I wasn't there at one point, you know, when you're a young player and you come into the NBA, um, a lot of things are foreign to you. And, um, you know, in college, you may watch film, but it's, it's more in a team collective uh, standpoint. And, um, you know, my, my second year in the NBA, um, you know, blessed enough to be around uh, Rajon Rondo. And uh, that dude is he's unreal. Um, you know, the way he approaches the game, the way he thinks about the game. Uh, the way he watches film is, um, you know, it really just intrigued me. And, um, you know, I want to be as great as I can be. And that's one of the things that really, you know, took, you know, my IQ and and um, the way I see the game to a different level. Um, you know, prime example, um, no matter what time it was, you know, we'd watch a game or we'd finish a game. You know, you finish a game around 11. I don't really go to sleep until, you know, probably two or three just because I'm still up from the game. And. Um, you know, Rondo, he would, he would call me, um, cause you know, we had that type of relationship and that's still one of my brothers today. So he would call me at three in the morning, two 30 in the morning. And, um, this is when I, I'm, I'm first now really kind of getting into film. Right. And he'll call me and be like, yo, what you doing right now? I'm like, uh, I'm watching watch film right now. And I really was, I wasn't trying to bullshit him. I wasn't, I, I wasn't trying to bullshit him. And I really was. And, um, he was like, all right, cool. Fast forward third quarter, 
uh, four minutes left in the game. Uh, what do you see right here? And uh, that's something that just stuck out to me. Like this guy's in his like, uh, it might've been his 14th year, 15, something like that. I don't, I don't remember what year it was for him, but he's been in the league for so long and he's still just like, just like that's engraved into him. It's his DNA. It's what makes him so smart. What makes him so great. And, um, you know, that's something that's just really, really always stuck with me. And, you know, to this day, I watch film at all times. Like, you know, um, this whole September, we've had, um, you know, a lot of open runs with the team and the guys are here. And um, I'm always asking for a film of just the open gym, just to watch. And, um, you know, it's just something that I, I really like to do. And it, it just helps me out. You know, it's, uh, you know, film gives you the answers to the test. You mentioned being a film addict. I love you. You're the NBA and coaching. Basketball. Coaching? Yeah. No. Nah. Nah. I, once I'm done, I'm done. done I, I'm going. Done. I'll go on to something else. But yeah, obviously, you have that. What do you hope the Wizards? If you were, you know, not into coaching basketball, but what do you hope this team looks like? This is. Um. I mean, we're a young team. Uh, I think that's that's one thing that you know obviously sticks out. But you know, we have a good blend of uh, of guys that are um, that experienced as well. Um, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say, say totally veteran, but, you know, seasoned players. So um, you look at guys like Bill, obviously he's a vet, superstar player. Uh, Spencer's been in the league for years. KCP's been, I think he might be year seven or eight or something right now. Um, you know, me being seasoned in year five and Bertans and Neto and, and guys that can really help these young guys just really, um, you know, just – turn up their learning curve. And I think that's the biggest thing because when you look at a, um, you know, an NBA roster and the NBA landscape, the teams that are wins are usually veteran teams. Um, so in, in that department, we have like a lot of work to do from a standpoint of just like catching up terminology. And we all do because it's a new coach and new staff and, you know, everything's, you know, kind of fresh juice around here. So um I think the biggest thing is just obviously um, gelling, understanding um, our strengths and weaknesses as a team and individually, and then also um, applying what coach coach wants us to do on the court, and um, you know, uh, you know, letting that stick and marinate. So, da. <laughs> How we doing? You good? Good, good to see you. Good to see you. Good hey, to see you. Um, I always wonder what happens when a guy gets traded, just kind of mentally, how you kind of recalibrate. You're in one headspace, you're in one place. You have a certain set of expectations because of the people you play with mm -hmm. and coaching style of play. And all of a sudden, that has to be completely shifted because you have a new set of teammates, new coach, new philosophy. How do you kind of reset your head? Yeah, you know, I think the biggest thing, um, to reset well it was multiple things but for me the biggest thing was you know just really processing like moving you know that was the biggest thing for me because you know living in LA for four four and a half years um you know that's all I know and you know that's home even to today you know I have my homes there and uh, that's where I live in the off seasons but um I think from a basketball strategic standpoint I was happy to go um just because I, I know what I can do in my career and what I want to do and want to accomplish um but, you know, there definitely are some changes. You know, I think that, uh, you know, there's been a lot of times, um, you know, and the coaches have, you know, implemented a little bit of the terminology uh, terminology from a defensive standpoint. And I just, I keep getting caught saying, you know, what we've done in LA for years. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm messing up guys sometimes when I'm yelling, uh, you know, a certain type of call for switch or, uh, you know, to get into a pick and roll coverage because it's just ingrained in me. So, um, that's a process, but you know th that took about two weeks, and I'm pretty good now. So, did you need to know Brad was going to be here to feel like okay, we can make something happen here? Um, I mean, obviously he's um, uh, top three, four, whatever you want to call it, top offensive player in the league. Um, you know, he's a guy that's averaged thirty in this league and has averaged over twenty seven, twenty eight for multiple years. So. Um, you know, obviously, when you have a guy like that and someone that's super, super explosive that can take over games and really, um, you know, cause a lot of havoc on, a, on, a, on opposing defenses, it's going to bode well for you. And, um, you know, I think we have great guys to, you know, mesh with mesh within what he does. And, um, you know, that's what it's about, you know. So, 
um, you know, playing with other star players, I kind of, I, I kind of know how to, you know, figure it out and mesh in and, you know, see what works. So, um, you know, I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I feel like, um, you know, we have, a, like I say, a great mix of uh, young guys and seasoned guys to, you know, do something in this league. So. And we'll take a, one more off of Zoom. Uh, Dan, go ahead. Hey, Kuz. Dan, like you at the LA Times, we'll miss you out here. Um, and good luck with everything in DC. Uh, I, have, I have a question. I, I know you said that the vaccination thing for you was personal. Um, when people hear that, I think they automatically assume, okay, well, that guy hasn't gotten vaccinated. Um, are there reasons, or can you think of personal reasons why you wouldn't want to share it? Even if you have, it, is, is that part of the calculus when we hear that? Because we either hear guys say that they've got it, they haven't got it, or it's personal. And I think people always want the personal into, well, they didn't get it. Yeah, I mean, obviously, when, when you know, it's the same thing, when, you know, when you're in the media and somebody uh, as a player um, has some negative thing around them and you answer, you ask that question and they go no comment, you all automatically think it's a bad thing. Um, but for me, you know, um, I think, you know, certain things in health or whatever you may go about, you know, things should be personal, and especially for us as, as athletes and the platforms that we have. Uh, we don't we don't get a, a much much private time and much uh, freedom in that nature. So, you know, I believe certain things you know should always be kept in the house because one, how the world is now today, you know, it, it, it's much better to stay as private as you can if that make, kind of makes sense. And you know that's not a bad thing. You know, it's not a wrong thing to ask for. So, um, you know, certain players may 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 go about that in uh, in their life because. Of that simple reason and um you know I, I don't think it's no right or wrong to that so when a guy gets traded you coming from a certain place with certain expectations coaching staff has a certain way of coaching things players that you're playing with maybe have different expectations how do you recalibrate reset when you're all of a sudden with a different group of players different group of coaches different set of expectations uh I mean, this ain't my first trade, so I mean, I ain't I ain't in that same boat of schools. Uh, I was traded uh, first time from Houston to the Clippers, so it's not nothing differently from how I went into that mindset. You know, just going in looking to do anything I can to help my team win and uh, put myself in the uh, best position to be able to be on the floor to help them do that. Um, I don't look at it any differently uh, than I went into that process with. Really, um, you know, this is my first time playing on the East Coast, uh, being on the part of an East Coast organization, so. Um, three hours from uh, my hometown, home state uh, in uh, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. So my family's going to be up here a lot to watch me play. I'm excited. And I can't wait to you know get started. Do you know that, like, when you, as soon as you hear it, you're going to the Wizards, you automatically know, oh, I can help you do this. I know I can do this for them. I know. I can, or do you have to wait? I got to wait and see because, I mean, at the end of the day, man, we don't even know what our lineup is really going to be, man. We know only one person that's going to be out on that floor for sure, and that's Bradley Beal. Everybody else around him, we it's still up for determination. We got a brand new coaching staff. We got new coaches. It's, just, it's new, you know, a new floor field throughout this whole organization, man. So we're gonna have to do it together. If it is a bench role, do you end up settling into? You've had obviously a lot of success coming off the bench this man of the year. Um, what has led to that? What are the keys to being good off the bench? Um, I'm gonna look at it the same process and the same mindset that I looked at it when I won. And when I was in the argument uh, the year before, honestly, man, um, I'm blessed to be able to be around veterans that I don't know how to play that role. Um, I had one of the best guys um, who might go down in the history to ever do it, um, win the award in Lou Will. Um, and he's a best friend, a uh, guy that I talk to on a consistent basis and somebody I look at as a mentor. So um, I got the tools around me that, you know, just basically put me in a position to be able to know how to handle those type of things, really. And I just, you know, became a complete sponge. And, um, you know, jail to it, really. Welcome to D.C. Um, I was wondering what your first impressions of Coach Jones are. He's obviously new here. It's his first time as head coach. Um, a lot of guys have kind of described him as somebody just with very open communication. What are your kind of first thoughts on that? Uh, I would agree because, um, you know, even when we've been playing uh, pickup, um, he's been doing his, uh, you know, basically his job of coaching us on different type of things he wants. Um, done as far as the defensive end for sure. Um, offensively, we're still gonna have to learn and gonna have to jail with, you know, multiple pieces being inserted into different positions. Um, but on the defensive end, he definitely has, uh, you know, 
came in early just set the tone that, you know, this is how we want to play defense. We don't want to be one of those teams that continues to think, um, you know, we're going to just try to outscore teams and not going to have to guard nobody. Um, so it's definitely one of the biggest things uh, that we're, you know, he's, he's definitely focusing on for us. And um, we need those type of things, uh, you know, because when you're in a situation like this with, you know, new players, new coaches, new organization almost, um, really, um, it, it's going to take a collective group. It's going to take everybody. Um, and it starts with the head coach. And just for him to be in there while we're, you know, not really technically after being here, um, but he's, you know, in here early with us, showing us. Um, he's bought into the the organization there and the program, uh, just like how we are. And I'm wondering if people, if there are kind of vocal leaders who have already emerged just from when you guys have been in open gym, because Brad, we've talked to him for years about how he's kind of more of a show don't tell type of guy. Um, he's, he's in here saying he wants to be more vocal and stuff. You've got a bunch of low-key guys on this roster. Do you feel like someone's going to kind of emerge or a couple people are going to kind of emerge as big, I guess, the big talkers? I don't know. It's probably me, honestly. That's good. Honestly, probably me. I don't know. I'm one of those guys who, you know, I really bite my tongue as far as nobody. I don't really care who it is, honestly, because, you know, when we're all out there on that floor, um, it's all planned for one goal. It's all planned for one mindset uh, to try to complete one task. Um, so there's no egos or there should be no feelings um, tied into it out there. Um, and, you know, I think uh, these guys know that I'm going to be a person that, you know, plays with 110% effort, uh, leave it all out there on the floor, um, do anything I can to help these guys and help this organization put ourselves, you know, in a chance to win, just like I've been doing the previous years in this league, really. Um, now I just think I'm going to be able to do it in a more role to where um, my voice is heard a little bit more. I mean, I've been in locker rooms where um, I was able to have my input on certain situations. I definitely think uh, definitely a lot with the Clippers. Um, you know, before we got the two star player guys that we got there. Um, but, you know, I've been in situations to where I, you know, I know how to do it. Um, every player is different. Everybody's role is different. Um, but, you know, like I said, it's, it's still going to be up for coach to kind of determine those tight roles. But amongst each other, um, I think we're going to kind of, you know, know who's who. Justin Gutcher, I did a play-by-play -play on TV. Uh, so first of all, welcome. Thank I'm you. Really happy to have you here. Um, a couple of questions. One, you mentioned learning from Lou Will about what it means to be coming off the bench and being that sixth man. What is it that he taught you, that he said to you, to be that sixth man? Uh, you see him winning the year before? Yeah. You see me winning the next year? Yeah. Guess he said the right things. <laughs> I mean, he's a guy, I mean, just look at his career, man. He's a guy who's been in this league. I don't think he's had a max contract, but you always hear his name. He's a guy that hasn't been on the team where he started, but you always hear his name. <laughs> so he's just a guy basically that learned how to basically, you know, he didn't put himself in a position of where he's coming off the bench. That's what the coaches put him in. So he said, if y'all gonna put me in this position, then I'm gonna be the best at this position. I'm gonna excel in it to a uh, point to where now you're gonna have to give me an award every year for it. And you, I can't do nothing but respect it because I know I'm off the court. You know, I know the, the the father he is off the court. I know the 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 brand ambassador, the the hard work he puts in in his craft. Um, you know, not just the basketball game, but as a you know businessman. Um, I mean, Lou, Lou is a Lou is a a very smart, talented person, man. A lot of people think just because uh, he's you know missing the songs by having two girlfriends and all that stuff like that, man. That man is extremely. Uh, it's the reason why he's missing these songs. He's an icon, legend, and. You know, and it's really a reason why he he's called the underground goat. It's, it's a reason for that. For you, going back to, to college and then being in the NBA, you've been undersized, but you always seem to, to rise to the occasion. What is it? Is it playing with a chip? Is it something else? How have you been able to almost exceed and always perform up to a certain ability? Um, I don't know, bro. I'm a dog, bro. I ain't got no other place to put it, bro. I don't really, all that height stuff and, you know, rankings and all that, I mean, it really don't matter, bro. You got to prove that once you get inside these four lines. That's where I came from. That's why I, it's the only way I've known how to be able to play the game. You know, I'm born and raised three hours from here, man. Um, and that's what it's taught me. Like, we don't really care what your name is. We don't really care who you are. Once you step inside those lines, you got to prove that you, you know, is the person that they say you is. And a lot of times, I've come to see a lot of these people that, you know, supposed to be these people, not really these people. 
once you pull that card, there's a lot of stuff that gets, you know, exposed to the light. And can't nobody save you when you're inside them four lines. Can't talk your way out of that. So, like I said, bro, I'm just different. I mean, uh, I look at myself as a dog. I don't I don't look for nobody to give me nothing. I don't look for nothing to be handed to me. I'm going to take what's mine. Uh, Dave Johnson, you do the radio. Play by play, give him welcome to DC as well. Thank you. Given what you were just talking about, as you look at this collection of players you have spent time with them, what excites you most about the potential that is uh, here at DC? Because we got a, a great group of guys, man. We got a mix of guys that are supposedly veterans, I guess, um, you know, because I'm looked at as a veteran. I'm only 27. Uh, KCP is looked at as a veteran. I think KCP is like, what, 28, 29. Brad is one, just like the same age, man. Then we got a lot of good, great young guys, man. Um, Aaron is one um, back there, man. He's only been in this league for four years, but he's had a hell of a uh, career in Indy. And I hated him while he was there, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Hell of a pest. Uh, but man, like we got a lot of great guys on this team, man, that that we're gonna do something special, I think, man. I think everybody's overlooking us and you know, that's what we're, we're okay with that. We're, we're not coming out here saying like, oh, we're about to be the best team in the East. We're not saying any of that. Keep overlooking us, keep, you know, writing us off of however you wanna do it. We're, we're fine with that. We know the work that we're gonna put in. We know the work that we have been putting in, you know, leading up to this training camp um, in the previous weeks so coming in, playing pickup, lifting weights and stuff, so. We're not really asking for nobody to, you know, put us nowhere. We're going to put ourselves in positions to, you know, be whatever we want this team to be, really. COVID has affected the last two NBA seasons uh, pretty dramatically in different ways. This year, obviously, it seems like vaccination status is shaping up to be a big storyline. There's different rules for vaccinated and unvaccinated players. Uh, what do you make of all that and how it could play such a I don't know, brother. It ain't got nothing to do with me, honestly. I, I got vaccinated throughout the season last year, and – that's all that matters. Everybody else has their different beliefs. Everybody else has their different reasons why. That's on them. I mean, I can't tell nobody that he's wrong for not getting the vaccination because this man feels his God-given right or his God-given belief that he shouldn't have it. I'm not going to tell him that. <laughs> that has nothing to do with me. I got vaccinated because I have two smaller kids. I'm traveling around. I have an aunt who's on dialysis and things like that. I'm not going to run the risk of taking this virus, this disease, into um, a space with them and then causing them to get sick. I'm not going to do that. So... The reason why I got the vaccination is to protect others around me. As far as any other player, why he gets it or why he doesn't, that's him. That's what you got to ask him. My second question. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, uh, you mentioned that you really hated Eric when he was in Indiana. Yes. Um, do you, <laughs> are those the guys you want to play with? Then? Yes, 100%, awesome. because, uh, I mean, I, I go throughout the league and, even playing in Drew Lees and playing pickup and Rico pickups, man, I, I come across some of the, the NBA's best that say the same thing about me. So, I mean, that, that's the type of people that you want on your team, though, because you know when, you know, when it's all said and done, no matter what that, you know, he left it all out there. You ain't going to never have to second guess or be like, you know, was he playing hard tonight? Was he, you know, trying to do the right thing to win? Like, no, you know for sure that he was trying to do those things because he showed it and proved it to you, you know, and, that's all I've seen uh, from him, like I said, since, you know, competing against him. Like I said, I couldn't stand him in Indy. Hell of a pass man up and down the floor. He's one of those guys that, uh, you know, honestly, I, I look at him as, uh, you know, one of those Pat Bev type players. Going to get up, press you full court, uh, control the pace of the game, both ends of the floor. Um, I mean, he's a hell of a young player. And I can't wait to just be out, be out on the floor and, you know, us to start proving and playing together. Can you tell him that the first time you meet him, you man? You know that shit out of me. <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't say anything to any of these guys. I kind of just let, like I said, I'm one of those guys that kind of sit back and kind of, you know, let the, you know, room kind of gravitate to me, man. Everybody knows that I'm going to be the same guy Monday through Sunday, man. I ain't going to really change up. Um, you know, I ain't going to shoot you no lie, but I'm not going to be the one to kind of come in and just start that, you know, uh, engage the conversation, really. But, you know, when it started getting going, you know, you're going to hear me in the room. <laughs> we'll take uh... – one off of Zoom here and then I move on to Aaron. Uh, Penny, if you can wait patiently, go ahead. I didn't hear who it was called, but Trez, can you uh, tell us about the Trez one that's coming out or that's already out and just uh, takes that process of you and Devlin's uh, relationship? All right. Uh, much respect for seeing that too, bro. Um, but it, it was a it was a year process of just going back and forth of uh, talking about uh, concepts and, you know, 
uh, different shoes that I kind of gravitated to, or I liked, and you know what I would kind of you know want to see in my shoe. Um, and you know, it was a year, like I said, a year process of just going back and forth doing that, basically images, uh, you know, sending him different shoes and circling uh, different highlights of you know I like about the shoe, what I don't like about the shoe, um, and you know, kind of going back and forth, just really just communicating through um, through text messages. But the thing that I really admire the most about uh, our conversation or about our whole, um, you know, business in general is just because uh, how he went about us doing the business. Um, anybody else out here doing shoes of a, of a celebrity, I guess you want to call it, or a person in my statue was to reach out to you and be like, hey, I want to, you know, do this with you as far as shoes or whatever. Instantly I jump, hey, let's do it. You feel me? But no, this man, he stuck to his principles. He said like, hey, like, you know, I respect you reaching out. I I rather want to meet with you in person so I can kind of see how you feeling about the shoe and if you're really serious and if it's really going to be worth the both of our time because I really don't want to waste neither one of our time. I can't do nothing but respect a man like that because he didn't let the, you know, statue of my job or the person that I am just make him change his principles. You know, he stuck to his principles and, you know, like I met with him, man, he came down with his wife and his kids, man. We had a great meeting. Uh, it was amazing, man. And, you know, like I said, over this year long process, man, this this is what you have the end product of, you know, what I just I've uh, been posting on Instagram and social media, man. I can't wait to really get it out there in the mass production. I think we're gonna try to have it out there by Christmas, but definitely um in the start of January. So um it's just it's a big accomplishment for me. Um it's a big, you know, change, honestly, because you know, you don't see players doing this. I think the last person you've seen doing this was uh the ball family when he came in with you know doing uh Lonzo and all them shoes but um even with them doing that it was a great movement and definitely one that opened my eyes because something I had been looking at but they didn't they didn't even really stay in the, in doing it that long you know I'm looking to do it to the point where I really you know become a household name in, into the, the sneaker world and you know hopefully actually get other you know NBA hoopers in my shoes as well. What are your just first impressions of getting on the floor with these guys and kind of how the chemistry is coming together so far? Uh, it was exciting. Uh, first time playing since we lost to the Wizards actually last season uh, in the playing game. So it was exciting for sure. Uh, getting ready to get started in the season and I'm excited for what we have going forward. We have a bunch of great group of guys who work hard and just give it their all, even in pickup. So I'm, I'm very excited to uh, get started. What does a new space, a new team, whatever, do for a young guy like yourself in mm -hmm. your career in terms of your mindset? Like, do you come up with a different set of goals? Or are you saying, okay, this is my chance at a new start? What's Where's your kind of head at about that stuff? A little bit of both. It's a chance for a new start for sure. I um, mean, Indy didn't go the way I wanted it to, obviously. But, again, it's a learning experience. I have the same goals, just to be the best I can be, uh, help my team win as many games as possible, and really play – great on-ball defense and help defense. Uh, those are things that I really think I could uh, bring to the team and show more than I, I did in Indiana. Aaron, Justin Kutcher, I get to play that play on TV. Welcome to the team. Appreciate it. Um, I'm one of four in my family. <laughs> All right. And we always talked about it whenever we had Indiana last year in Milwaukee, mm -hmm. that you and your brothers, all three of you guys are in the league. Mm -hmm. What was it like growing up in that house and how competitive was it? Extremely competitive. We obviously competed at everything, all the way up to my parents, my cousins. Uh, I have a sister who's three years older than me. So we just competed. And that's probably what molded us into who we are today. So it was it was great getting out there, just playing against each other all the time. Obviously, your brother won a championship in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. What was that like, watching him accomplish that? It was awesome. Uh, I actually have two brothers who have championships now. So the first one was the same way. Uh, it's a great experience for me just getting out to, uh, he was with the Warriors at the time, Justin was. So yeah, it was a crazy experience. I enjoyed every bit of it. And then being able to go out there to Drew's with Justin, um, it was just a great family experience. And then the last question I want is how much trash talking goes on between all of you? Uh, not really, not much trash talking. Um, I mean, we're just all happy for each other, honestly. We we can care less about all the trash talking, but we just we're just happy to be out there and play and represent our family. Hey, welcome to DC as well. Appreciate it. James Johnson said there's a radio that he was doing. Is that test uh, mentality that uh, <laughs> Trust was uh, talking about? Is that come from that family environment where maybe you had to scratch? Yeah, early? for sure. Uh, I had to obviously grow up playing against Justin Drew and my sister, who are all older than me. So 
back in the day, they were all bigger than me. Um, so I had to obviously do what I can to stay out there and and just try to get some wins or some baskets or just get the ball, like playing 21 or something, you know? So I guess it could come from that, being a pest, trying to be physical with them and just try to win. Is this team tries to get better on defense how teams play against this, mm -hmm. this is a new team, a new uh, collection. What do you think are the key components of a defensive journey? Because it's not going to happen overnight. It's not, but Coach West does a great job of communicating us and having a good structure is one main thing that, that we need. Um, just the simple base and just growing from there, whether that's we need to play harder here, we need to do this better. So I think a, a good structure would, would help us in the long run for sure. I guess speaking of that, um, two seasons ago, three seasons ago in Indiana, you guys had some really good defenses under mm -hmm. Nate McMillan. Mm -hmm. um, what did you kind of take from that as a young player? What did you learn that kind of will stay with you for the rest of your career in terms of the, just the principles? Just how he taught us defense pretty much. Um, it was just, we drilled it every day. Uh, we did the shell drill, we did multiple defensive drills. So it was kind of second nature to us. So I think that's one thing that obviously moving forward that we need as a group and that as individual, just continue, continuously drilling uh, what coach needs us to do and wants us to do. And Spencer Dinwiddie is, is known for his defense to a degree, Paul Metco as well. And, and you guys, three point guards, the whole rotation could defend. Just mm -hmm. what do you think that could do for this team to just have interchangeable defensive parts like that? Man, it could do a lot. Um, again, I'm excited for this season because of how good we can be de defensively. And I know we can score with anybody in the league. So once we get our defense down, I, I think we'll be pretty good. And uh, I guess one more question. Just kind of, what are your uh, first impressions of DC? I'm sure you've traveled through here, obviously. But now yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice. It's awesome. Uh, my first time being in DC, I came for a workout uh, pre draft in 2018, but just being able to see the city, all the monuments, everything, it's, it's pretty dope. I'm enjoying it for sure. What'd you say? Yeah, for sure. Take <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Real quick, you talking about your brothers and your sister, and, mm -hmm. and um, just the way you handle yourself and the way all of you guys handle yourselves. What was it that your parents drilled into you as kids that, that led to you be these great adults? Um, just the belief in God. Uh, that's probably the main thing they they installed us. We're all Christians, so we believe pretty much God's will be done. Uh, that's one main thing that they really installed in us at an early age, and just believing that gives us confidence, even just our parents giving us confidence, uh, pretty much telling us, you know, not you know what you can be, but you know how you should act, you know what you should do, just make the right decision. And that, that stuck with me uh, for, the, for my whole life, entire life until now, so. And we'll take one on Zoom for the meal. Aaron, um, you know, you talked about it with Haul and, you know, Spencer, you obviously want to have, you know, a role here. How do you feel that you can, you know, carve out minutes in what might be a, you know, tight rotation with all the depth um, with Coach Unseld? Uh, it's not my job to discuss, honestly. I'm just here to hoop. So however Coach decides to play us, that's how he decides. I'm going to go out there and play hard whenever I can. I don't think we've had a chance to talk to you since the summer of this foot. Uh, is that experience of, you know, fade away in the past and the dust is settled? Kind of what do you take away from it? Uh, now that you're back? Yeah, I mean, it. It was a shock to me. I mean, it's going to be this way in the NBA too, how quickly you have to prepare for games or how quickly you have to, you know, get ready to play. You know, you have a, you'll have a day, maybe two days or even 12 hours to get ready for a team in the NBA. And that just wasn't the case in college. So um, kind of was thrown into the fire that way with um, some of the hurdles we had to jump over as a team in summer league. And uh, it was a good kind of test run for what's coming this year. What are your objectives and your approaches when are your first NBA training camp? Um, I'm just trying to be who I am, you know, be me. Um, it's gotten me this far, and I hope to, you know, have it carry me for the rest of my career. So no plans on changing anything up, just going out there and playing as hard as I can and let the chips fall where they may. You might answer that a little bit just then, but have the coaches said, okay, here's what we want to focus with you in year one or the first six months walk or whatever like that? Have they kind of given you guidelines and this is what we need to tackle first? Uh, not really. I mean, thankfully, it's there's nothing like extraordinarily new that I'm needed to work on. Like, it's all just kind of, you know, honing in on certain parts of my game that I'm probably going to use more than others and perfecting those. So 
Um, it's been great. The coaches have been awesome. And I've been on the floor and in the gym a lot. Um, and I've seen, you know, strides even since I've gotten here a couple weeks ago. Have you been able to latch on to anybody yet and just be like, great, I'm going to follow you around. I'm going to learn from you. You're, <laughs> you're my guy. Yeah. So uh, Anthony Gill is a um, maniac. Yeah. yeah. He works so hard. And um, whether I'm going to, um, you know, still enjoy it or not, you know, five months from now, he and I do some conditioning after practice together. So um, I see how much he runs around, how good a shape he's in, and I want to be exactly that way. Corey, you played for Mark Q at Gonzaga. Uh, there are certain coaches that seem to develop guys for the NBA. What is it about Coach Q that you think helps prepare you for what's ahead? Yeah, um, I think it's just the way he the way he plays. You know, I mean, he's he puts you in. He's really good at putting you in spots that you'll be successful in. He only wants you to do, you know, what you're capable of. Um, he's not asking you to do anything crazy. And um, I think, you know, the way that we played last year was about as similar to an NBA team as you can find in college basketball. So, you know, a lot of the terminology is the same. A lot of the pace of play is the same. And, um, you know, he's been around the block, Coach Few has. So, um, you know, I trust him absolutely with my game. Obviously, everyone knows you as a shooter. So, how many shots would you say you get up on an average day? Yeah, that's such a tough, that's a tough question to ask because or to answer because um, I don't think you know. And, and any sh shooter at this level will tell you that if you go in the gym and you sit in the corner and you shoot, you know, seven hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred thousand shots, like what's that doing for you? You know, um, you know. So if I can get in here for forty-five minutes, work my tail off, get up a really good sweat, and shoot game shots, like even if I shoot 200 of them, then that's going to do way more for me than getting a thousand, you know, catch and shoot standstill ones. So um, it differs day to day, uh, but it's never, you know, you know, I'm, I'm working hard while I'm shooting. So it, it's um, about 45 minutes or so. Before we have a big chance, I did the word just for radio, so welcome. Thank you. See. Appreciate it. Um, well, I've you just said you're a maniac and, and Anthony Gill and, and, uh, you know, if you were still in college, you wouldn't be starting practice for another couple of weeks. Just how has this transition been with so much going on from the maniac to summer league to you're already working out before training? Camp? Well, I want to clarify. I mean, maniac like in a really good way. You know, uh, yeah. Yeah. But you know, it's it's obviously that's a lot going on. How are you? Yeah, totally. I mean, I like. Um, before I got here and even, you know, while I was here, I felt like I'd been living out of a suitcase for like two months. Um, and it was, it was tough. It was tough to bounce around and be in different places and, you know, sleeping in different beds and stuff like that. Um, it's something that I'm just not used to. So um, now that I'm here, I do feel like I can take, you know, some deep breaths and really settle in. And, um, you know, thankfully we've been in town for a while. So um, there is a routine being here is familiar um, and, you know, getting started in training camp tomorrow is going to be, um, you know, just kind of hitting the ground running. We have asked you a few times about Rui. Unfortunately, he's not here. Just, um, I guess, uh, what were your thoughts on just the fact that one of the key players on this team is not here? Yeah, it's just, well, first of all, it's just yet another example of how much more goes into a basketball player than what they do on the court. You know, um, and Rui's, there's so much goes on in Rui's life um, from a very young age. And even while I, you know, had the pleasure of playing with McGonzaga, there was just so many things going on that, you know, would be hard to juggle. So, I mean, whatever and however much time he needs is what he needs. And, you know, he'll be back with us shortly and I'm, I can't wait for it. And um, circling back to your question, um, I can't wait. You know, uh, Rui's been my guy for a long time and we played together for a long time and, um, can't wait to kind of pick up our chemistry where we left it in Spokane. And what do you make? We've been asked a lot of players about this. What do you make of just how clearly vaccines are going to be a big storyline this season and uh, players who have gotten them and who haven't are kind of under different guidelines? Um, just kind of what's your perspective on that? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's all about, you know, at the end of the day, like it's our job to be on the floor. So, you know, whatever you think is best for you and, um, in that regard and how you can get out there on the floor, compete and stay healthy throughout the season. You know, that's kind of the main objective and the main goal. So, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how it shakes out, you know, six months from now, because it looked a lot different six months ago.
And we've also been asking this uh, for a lot of players. So have you been vaccinated? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We'll take a few from Zoom, Glenn. Hey, Corey. Um, it was nice meeting uh, you earlier, right when you got drafted, and your folks as well. Um, question I have for you is, Wes, what Coach West said that you really have looked good since um, over the summer, uh, since you've been drafted. Um, there, there was that gap of time uh, to get yourself prepared for now. Uh, what areas do you think you've improved in during that short period of time, you know, and including summer league? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it, it could be really easy to kind of let yourself slip with all the traveling that you're doing. Um, you got to do everything you can to stay in shape, show up here in shape and ready to go. Um, you know, and thankfully, the formula has always been pretty simple for me. Like, I'm not trying to, you know, overhaul anything or overcomplicate stuff. Um, and I have something that I, I have routines and stuff that I stick to. And, you know, I just kind of stayed in that zone up until I got here and was able to kind of, you know, like I've said earlier, hit the ground running. And what, what are some of the things that you feel aside from shooting that you can contribute as a rookie? Because you, you got to absorb, you know, the, the language, the, the new game now, uh, the elite athleticism, the speed of the game. But what are some of the other things that you think you can contribute? So yeah, I think a, yeah, absolutely. A level of maturity. You know, I played a lot of basketball, uh, played a lot of games. And while I haven't played any at this level, you know, I mean, I've, I feel like I've seen about just about everything that you can. Um, yes, the athleticism goes up, the speed of the game goes up, the talent goes up. Uh, but fundamentally, it's it's all, you know, it's the hoops 10 feet high and um, the free throw line's 15 feet away, you know. So um, just a level of maturity that I think, you know, the learning curve will be a little less steep for someone like me. Thanks. Neil. Hey, Corey, good to see you again. Um, obviously, you know, there are some really good shooters on this team. Brad, uh, Davies, Kuz. Have you guys uh, gotten a chance to do any shooting drills and try and out outdo each other? Nothing formal yet. Uh, we have plenty of time to get that done and make that happen. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. All right, let us know when it's happening. We need that on film. Cool. Not there? Okay, Andrew, go ahead. Andrew Gillis. My bad, sorry, couldn't hear you there. Um, Corey, you mentioned kind of adjusting to the speed of the game. Um, you know, obviously that kind of changes. Is it just game action that, you know, kind of acclimates you to the NBA level? I mean, is there anything you can do kind of out of game to, to kind of help you uh, adjust with that? No. I mean, you can watch all the film you want, but as soon as you step on the floor, it just becomes different. So, you know, playing pickup um, and just moving and, and playing with the guys that are on the floor um, has helped me a ton. And that's been the biggest key for, you know, someone new like me is just getting on the floor and playing pickup and getting up and down. What, what is uh, going into this training camp like compared to last time around? Obviously, was, uh, last offseason was so short. It was, uh, there were some challenges uh, getting started. How are, how are things different for you now? Uh, I was here before uh, Labor Day. So so that's, I guess that's, that's the biggest difference. Uh, I've had plenty of time to acclimate and get used to being here again and uh i think that's the biggest deal and getting on like on the court with guys playing five on five that's like you can't beat that right before the season yeah what has that uh helped you know as far as your game and your conditioning i, I would imagine it's a pretty big difference oh uh, yes i'm definitely ready for the season uh you know last season i ended up with the end of, end of season with the calf injury that basically took half of the summer to get that right, uh, then I play with the national team a few games and uh, and yeah, then a few mo couple more weeks uh, at home, just individual work, and then came here. You are fully recovered from that. Yes, right? yes. Did you have to work on strengthening that in the second half? I mean, you better actually, like, uh, You know, I'm, unfortunately, I don't like to admit that, but I'm getting up there in the age, so <laughs> I'm going to have to keep working on that for the rest of my career probably. It's just those things starting to add up and, uh, you know, 
had the two ACL injuries early on. That was the main focus, always keeping the knee okay. You know, then then the calf injury, then you, you add another thing. So hopefully I don't get to working on my whole body just for hours a day just to yeah, be, in, be in okay. Um, what are your first impressions of, of your new coach you got? Uh, you know, talk to him briefly, you know, just being around him during the practice, uh, him just having us in, you know, he, he asked uh, most of the, basically all the guys to come in as, as early as possible, just, just so we can get used to the coaches, uh, the new teammates and everything. And, uh, you know, he's asking for a ball movement, which I think is, is a great thing in basketball. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we'll see now in the training camp, uh, when we're going to be working more and more on, on the stuff that we need for the season, you know, it was more of just playing basketball and just doing a little bit of the team stuff, uh, just trying to figure out the systems already. And now we're really getting to dig into it. Thomas, last year was such a crazy year um, for you to come over. You talked about how you had to work yourself back in shape. When you just walked in the room and I saw you, I was like, whoa, like, you look like you're in the best shape of your career. I know that people always say that at the beginning of training camp or whatever, I feel like I'm in the best shape. Do you actually feel like that right now? Uh, I would say definitely got the most work done uh, this past summer. Uh, you know, it was about six weeks of almost no basketball and just getting the body right, which, uh, you know, from the past, when I had the ACL injuries, I think every time I had the, that injury, the first year back was was the best one of all time. So, uh, yeah, so hopefully we can continue that. You know, it's it's a good, you know, the injury is a good reminder that it's not that easy. And, uh, and, you know, it gives you like a chance of like hitting the reset button and just starting from almost zero to kind of build it back up. And one thing about you that I think everyone in D.C. loves is your confidence whether it was Scott Brooks used to talk about your confidence or, or whatever. Um, last year, there seemed to be a time where it was, it was shaken and you had that chance to restart. Do you think, or have you been thinking in the off season about, I know how good of a shooter I am. I want to get back out there and show everyone, dude, like I'm that guy. Uh, I think it's even less of showing everybody else. Uh, it's just showing myself that last year was just, just one of those years that you kind of want to forget. And, you know, that and at the end of my career, I can say, okay, that, that one year was, it was something out of the ordinary. And, uh, and you know, keeping the this season and next season as consistent as possible, you know, you get, you can, you're never going to have, a, I don't think you're ever going to have a shooter that goes the whole season long and all, eight, nine months of shooting at 45%, 50%. And uh, there's always going to be that, you know, that dip in the percentages and uh, that kind of tests you a little bit. I think uh, I still remember like some of the guys like Clay Thompson, you know, probably one of the best catch and shooter shooters in, in the league in, in the history of the game. And uh, like, even he was uh, asking him a question of, so what do you do? Like, you know, the percentage go down, like you can't make shots. Well, you can't stop shooting like you keep shooting like that's the only way you can get back but like you keep shooting in practice and you keep shooting games and you used to shoot with a boom in your face when you're back so no big deal right uh yeah i'm actually having one of the one of the coaches sometimes just foul me all the time when i'm when i'm shooting threes and and have a little bit of fun with that and uh you know in the games very often there's some contact made that uh is, is not enough for a foul call so you know got to work on that as well what, what excites you most about uh, this this collection and how it can help you and how you see this team playing out? Well, since we got some guys that have been traded here, uh, as from my own experience, you know, getting traded is, is, is not a great feeling, feeling like somebody's given up on you and it gives you like extra motivation and, uh, and at the same time, a great opportunity, a new place that actually wants you here. So, so I think it's going to be a, a great great place for for the guys that are new to this team this this summer additions and uh waiting for tb to come back uh you know denny's back from his injury he's gonna be ready for the season right yeah. uh and uh yeah you know having all the guys healthy and uh, and all the new guys on the team kind of you know the main goal is right now just to kind of put it all together and uh 
and find that chemistry as, as soon as possible. You know, it won't, won't be a surprise if it's a little bit of a struggle early on in the season. You know, you you can't just throw guys together and expect us to play great immediately. And uh, hopefully, we can do that as soon as possible. Going back to your confidence as a shooter, uh, I know you probably think you can measure up against anyone uh, in a shooting competition, but just what are, what are your early uh, impressions of Corey Kisper as you see him uh, kind of firing at the long range or out there? Uh, yeah, since we had those scrimmages, uh, he's he's making shots. You know, he's getting the open looks and making them. That's that's probably the most most important thing. You know, when you're open, you make them. Uh, especially as a rookie coming in, like nobody expects him to come out and shoot crazy shots and make those. And uh, you know, maybe eventually he'll get there. But as long as he's making open shots, teammates going to trust him and probably going to get more and more better looks. Last question to Neil. Hey, Davis, good to see you. Um, how much of, you know, all the ups and downs between injury, COVID, everything last year, do you think that impacted your defense? Um, and how do you think that's going to improve this year uh, under Wes Unfeld Jr.'s defense? Well, mostly in my opinion, defense is, is, is a team thing. And, uh, you know, if, if we're if we're going to have a good system and everybody's going to commit to it, I think we're going to do, we're going to all look better on defense, but, but of course the injuries uh, and last season, not being in shape, it, it all affects a lot. And uh, you can see that I think last year was probably the only season besides the rookie year that, you know, other teams were just trying to have me switch on them and then go ISO one-on-one, which previously rarely happened. And if it did, then, you know, it, it, really worked out for them so so hopefully me being in shape uh is gonna be a lot better this year how's the ankle feeling well way better i mean the ankle's behind me right now um i did a great rehab for about like six months uh we thought it's gonna be shorter but uh thank god i had a great staff around me that helped me uh, uh rehab and uh get back on track as fast as i can so i'm thankful for that and uh, there's been a lot of talk from Coach Unseld and other uh, Tommy Shepard about how you might be able to be more of a playmaker this year, uh, secondary on-ball playmaker. Um, what, what, what's kind of your response to that? Is that I understand obviously you did more of that in your previous stops. I mean, first of all, my my first thoughts in 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 um, this year's role is uh, to help the team as much as I can. So whatever Coach uh, needs me to do or my teammates need me need me to do uh, to make the team better. Uh, that's that's what what I'm gonna do. So, uh, for me, I'm, I'm I'm excited for a new year, new opportunities, uh, new players uh, that uh, came came, and uh, we'll see how it goes. I mean, you know, you never know what's what your role gonna be, but you know, I'm I'm positive. So. I can't hear you. Uh, well. You guys are, have just been in open gym, not necessarily like working on yeah. teams yet or anything that much. Um, but what is it like working with? With Spencer and having him, how is the offense different? Do you feel like your game is, is adjusting around basically you know, all these new guys on the floor? Um, to be honest, uh, I wasn't really on the court uh, with him as much. Uh, I was uh, still re rehabbing, working out, uh, getting in shape. Uh, they were playing open gym for sure, but I was uh, looking from the side and like um, seeing them work out and um, play together. It seems good. I mean, they sharing the ball. Uh, I mean, we have great pieces that came along, Spencer. And all, all the guys that came, the new guys that came to. And um, I think we're going to do special things this year. I mean, uh, Spence is also coming back from injury. Everybody knows his uh, skill and what can he do. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what the new team is all about. So. Was summer all about rehab for you? Were you able to kind of shift anything or focus on anything, add anything to the game? Uh, of course. Of course, rehab for me was not all not all uh, not um, just being in the gym and and, and treating my ankle. Is also um, um, lifting weights, making sure I'm, I'm preparing, I'm preventing all, all the injuries possible, um, getting stronger, and uh, yeah, working on my game. I mean, from from my three point uh, game to uh, ball handling and and you name it. Uh, I mean, I, I was grinding that summer. I was barely home. I was staying in DC almost the whole summer, so it means uh, that that means a lot to me that that season and uh, to get better in the future. So, yeah. Kenny, uh, first things first, Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Um, with the injury, yeah. 
gives you some time before you can start the rehab to, to look back at your rookie year. What did you look back and learn and pick apart when you looked at your game? Um, I've learned tons. I can tell you that. Um, I had a couple of situations last year uh, that I started off the season and then it was time that I was not really playing and didn't get almost any minutes. And then I, I was back in the rotation and, you know, I was starting, then I was on the bench. It was kind of a roller coaster for me, but I, I liked it. I mean, it put me, it puts me in, t in challenges uh, and it made me stronger. And I knew like what's my role at any time, and it made me um, it made me m much stronger. Like in in the in the way that I can also come and affect off the bench and come in, in the starting five and do what I need to do to make the team better. Um, it wasn't stable for me last year. You know, as as a rookie, you always going uh, going through a, a roller coaster. But uh, I try to um, be as stable as possible, and I think it made me much stronger as a as a person as a player. Having said that, as you look forward to a, a year where now it's a, a, essentially a new team, what, what excites you most about the opportunity with this group of guys as you look at it? Uh, what excites me is um, the rookie duties will be reduced. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's, that's, a, that's a starting point for me. <laughs> that's a, one last thing that I need to focus on. Um, and just uh, being more mature, I feel like I... Um, I've I've been guarding guys. I've played on the NBA court. I ran with with the best players in the world, and and I know what's the feeling of it. Like in the, in my first year, I was co coming to a, a new team, a new gym. It was it was tough for me. I needed to adjust uh, to the pace, to to the defense, to everything, uh, to the respect from the refs, er from the refs, everything. So now I'm way more experienced. I know where I'm where I'm at. What's my place? Uh, I know the the gyms, the players. And it's 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 less less things to focus on. So hopefully it's a, it's a good starting point. Danny, it's always an adjustment. As any rookie has to make an adjustment to the to the NBA. I wonder what the biggest adjustment was for you. Uh, it's different for me than a lot of players that come to coming to the NBA because I didn't came from college. I came from Euroleague and I played pro since I was sixteen. So um, um, it's just mostly the pace of the game. And I want to say also that nobody, nobody really was familiar with your game. Nobody really knew who you were. Nobody, you need to earn respect. You need to earn the trust from your teammates, coaches, uh, everything. And um, yeah, it was, it was, it was a whole, like, it was really like a big change for me coming here also culturally and uh, also in basketball, but um we're here now, you know. I, I broke through a lot of obstacles on the way, so let's just keep it going. Do you like time for two more questions? So we'll go to Neil and then to Hey, Denny, good to see you. Um, you see discussed you. with the uh, you know local people in Israel that you guys tweaked your shooting mechanics a little bit. Um, what was that process like, and how how do you feel uh, the fluidity of it is now? Um, I worked almost the whole summer with um, the trainer, uh, Mike Davis. He's uh, he's about, he's working with me on how I move on the court and how I get into my shot and how to use my legs and, and body uh, way more efficient. And and it was a big process for me because uh, a lot of times I'll get tired. I won't have my legs with me. And he really did a great job of, of, of coming in with me any, every, every morning and uh, and just work out, just work out on, on the things that I need to uh, be able to um, play as much games as I can, have my legs all the time. And um, hopefully, hopefully it will pay off. So. And you had touched on how Russ helped teach you, you know, be a tough player. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? You know, what specifically and how do you hope to, you know, continue that on in your career? Russ, Russ made me uh, made me tough mentally for sure. Like um, you know, playing with 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 a uh, with a great player like Russ, uh, it wasn't easy, especially as a rookie. And he demands a lot uh, of you from uh, on the court, and and I experienced it uh, sometimes the hard way, you know, uh, whether it's like uh, him uh, shouting on me sometimes doing a game, but but 
I'm, I just want to say thank you, thank you to him because he just made me stronger. He uh, he helped me uh, coming into the NBA and and really uh, um, make my mind better. So I need to thank him for uh, for a great uh, great first year. So last time we talked to you, uh, you said I think you're really close to getting cleared for five and five. And yeah. Years, so I guess just what's the latest uh, coming out of the, the ACL is looking at training camp. Uh, I anticipate being full going training camp. I played fives the last couple of weeks that I've been out here uh, with the team. I know in general, we have a very dedicated, very thorough, sometimes conservative uh, training staff. So they'll be watching me very, 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 very closely for the next um, two years. And I say two years, not because I plan on leaving, but because they say that's the ACL window that they want to monitor me in. So you know, three years and beyond, please. Uh, so will that be a factor this preseason? Do you expect to be limited or will you play in the preseason? I hope to play in the preseason. <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll see. I haven't spoken to them about the actual games. Um, I don't know how our coaching staff approaches preseason, sorry, approaches preseason in general. You know, some guys or some uh, coaching staffs will say like, uh, you know, one game, we're only going to play the training camp guys so that they can get a look, whether it's overseas or G League. So, you know, I don't want to sit here and say, I'm playing all four preseason games. And then, like, they literally sit all of us and you guys call me a liar. So. We wouldn't do that to you. Um, Maybe DC media is nicer than, yeah. than New York. I don't know. I don't know. When you arrive on a team uh, with a guy like Brad, who's obviously trained as cornerstone, da, 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 all that stuff. Do you guys have conversations beforehand in terms of how you want to work together, what you want to get done together, or is it just like see you on the court? No, uh, like I've known Brad a little bit. Obviously, we're same age. So, you know, growing up playing against him, things like that. Um, in general, I mean, talk to him during like the free agency process as well. Um, and, and yeah, he knows that I'm here to, to help uh, take the team to the playoffs um, and, and hopefully beyond when, uh, you know, the time is right when we all get on the same page and, and, and everything. So, you know, he knows that I'm here to, to aid him. Like, that's uh, that's my job. And we're asking a bunch of guys, but are you vaccinated? Uh, yeah. So is a follow-up to that just a... Ooh, no controversy over here, baby. Come on now. <laughs> Sorry, just as a follow-up to that, what do you make of um, just how that's going to play a factor this year? I'm sure you've seen your former teammate Kyrie has been uh, a part of the, the storylines right now. No? <laughs> not, maybe not specifically about that, but just okay. generally, generally how it's clearly going to be a factor, just like the bubble was two years ago and protocols were not. Yeah, uh, you know, my, my healthy opinion on this is as long as Daniel Gafford is vaccinated and stays healthy, we have a fighting chance against every team in the league. I'm not just saying that because he's in the room. <laughs> so I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to do it again. Um, when a guy has a, when a guy's injured, he's injured. He can't play. Yeah. It's not a choice. Yeah. He can't play. Um, if a guy gets suspended, it's not a choice. You can't play. Yeah. How will teammates react when a guy can't play because he chose not to get a shot? I'm probably not the best guy to ask about this because I'm very much so like in a lot of ways, eat right, you know, have healthy habits. Like you will take care of yourself. Like the body's a machine that's designed to heal itself in a lot of ways. Obviously it's a very uh, special circumstance. Um, also somebody that's relied on modern medicine for like my ACL surgeries, for example. Um, so I do understand special cases, but there is that side of me too that says like hey like if that's fully what you believe like I support it because part of my soul lives there too so in in terms of that conflict um, I can't say that if I wasn't in the NBA that I may look at this you know a little bit differently I think the job has a piece to play in this um, and also my parents being uh, a little bit older than normal 20 year old parent age um, but, you know, everybody has their own factors. Like, you got to – it's a personal decision. I'm not going to be the guy that sits here and, and gets on somebody. Spencer, welcome. I'm Dave Johnson. This is Rodrigo uh, for the Wizards. 
Was that? The, uh, Dallas was just mentioning that you know, obviously he's been a trainer when he comes to a new team. When you, mm -hmm. when you come to a new team, is there a, a edge or a chip or, or something? Or what, what's your mental frame as you, you come to a new team? Or is there that mentality you want to show them? Um, not so much. I mean, I think my time in Brooklyn is very interesting. Right. If, if I don't go get hurt and we keep the same squad and go on to win a championship, whatever, um, you know, you probably keep the team together, extend all that other stuff. So I'm probably there um, with me being hurt and all the changes that were made and, and kind of being a little bit removed. You pretty much knew that I probably wasn't going to be on the Nets. So it wasn't like a love loss situation because they also gave me an opportunity, you know, five seasons ago. So, you know, there had to be somebody that took a shot on me when I was in the G League. So I really appreciated that. And then more so now, it's about like proving the Wizards right than anything. You know, when, when somebody uh, pays you, especially coming off an injury, like, you know, even if you feel like you deserve it or, or underpaid or whatever you want to call it because of the caliber player that you feel like you are, like the, the fact of the matter is you still, you know, haven't uh, played, a, played a minute post ACL yet. And they've taken a pretty large big bet, not just on you as a player, but also on you as somebody that can co-lead a franchise and, and help facilitate the elephant in the room, which is hopefully keeping, you know, our cornerstone in the building. So, you know, th those are the things that I'm focused on, you know, proving this organization right, helping Brad in any way I can, uh, making sure that we continue to put our best foot forward so we can, you know, in a year, two years, whatever it is, be a, be a true contending team um, in a major city that has a political backdrop and, and would be phenomenal for us to be a, a, a staple in the NBA. There's no reason we shouldn't be. So that, that's more so the focus than anything in Brooklyn because I genuinely do appreciate the years that I spent there. Spencer, uh, when someone has an injury like an ACL, everyone talks about the rehab, the process, but it's not until you get into a situation where you, you do something and you test it, you're like, I'm good. Yeah. Have you had that moment yet where you did something and you're like, okay, I got it, I'm good now? Uh, don't, don't check Diallo about a month ago. Thought that was kind of nice. <laughs> It's on it's on Instagram, y'all can hey, catch me on Instagram, Spencer Dinwiddie. Uh, go follow me. Uh, it's it's up there. Basically, I kind of sort of feel like I'm like like almost back, but once again, like if I had that same type of move in training camp and I dunk on Gafford, then I know for sure like I'm really back for real. Uh, No, I mean, no, no. I, obviously, it goes without saying in terms of DC, how um, I want to uh, step foot into that realm hasn't really occurred to me because we have more pressing issues. Like, I want to continue to keep the main thing the main thing. Everything I listed there starts off with basketball. And quite honestly, people wouldn't even care about my affinity for cryptocurrency and the other stuff if I wasn't a basketball player and, and, a, and a high level one at that. You know, I mean, I, I've been talking about crypto for five years. People didn't start caring until I started, you know what I'm saying, going crazy. So, like, <laughs> that, that's just that's just the real. You didn't know what it was. I, oh, that, that too, that too. I think there's a learning curve and all that stuff for the, for the general public, but it's a lot more fun to say, like, skills challenge winner or potential all-star does this crazy crypto thing than, like, hey, five-pointer game dude that doesn't play at all <laughs> has a side business. Like, it, just, it doesn't have the same ring to it. So, you know, if you, if you do your job, we get Brad to sign the Supermax. We go to playoffs. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll go talk to Biden. <laughs> Tax laws too, boy, you trying to kill me. <laughs> Move to Puerto Rico, folks. <laughs> Shit. Well, Derek, hey, Spencer, just what conversations have you uh, started to have with Coach Unseld about you know your role and how he feels uh, you can fit into his offensive system and defensive system? Um, I mean, in general, like, obviously, we talk about, uh, like, schemes and things like that uh, because, obviously, he's a coach and, and starting to put some of those things in place just over this kind of mini camp period. Um, I mean, obviously, the, the truth of the matter with the NBA is, like, some of that hierarchy is kind of established by um, – how checks are written. So like, I'm going to play, obviously, like my, I'm going to be the starting point guard. That's going to be my role. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't really know what else to kind of put on that one. That's probably a no-brainer. That's fair. I guess how, how much feedback do you then give him and say, oh, hey, maybe this is something we can try? Or is that still very early on in the process while you guys work things out? Um, I, I think it's early. I think so far he's talked about being collaborative for sure. But I think um, for me, especially uh, with a new head coach, like the last thing you want to do is feel like you're trying to like step on toes or take control or anything like that. Um, it's just, I, I don't think that lends itself to an effective relationship. So it's really more so about me learning right now. And as we continue to put all the systems in place and, and you know, learn the system, adopt it, all that stuff, that's where you you ask for maybe a tweak here or there. But for now, it's about committing fully to it and, and giving all your energy and effort to the process of, of what he has set forth. Appreciate it. Thanks, Spencer. No problem. Oh, they cutting y'all short. Shout out Quentin. Christy, you good? I could not, I cannot hear when you're calling a couple of times today. I'm sorry. Um, Spencer, when, when you spoke about taking pressure off of Bradley Beal, what specifically do you mean by that when you say taking pressure off of him and, and helping him out? Um, I, I mean, for me, I feel like my play style, if we look at just the Brooklyn years, it's, it's been one that's been very malleable. Um, you know, I would say, First year, I kind of came off the bench. Second year, I ended up having like high assist numbers. Third year, it was six man scoring punch off the bench. Fourth year, we we're talking about like a guy who kind of led a team to the playoffs due to injuries to our, our three stars. And then obviously fifth year was more so like a Draymond role. Um, here, it'll probably be a lot of playmaking. Um, obviously, Brad, we hope to score 25, 30 points, whatever it is. Um, looking at a lot of the playmaking, making sure the ball continues to move and not stick. Um, and then obviously probably taking on the the second best player defensively. Um, looking at our lineup right now, you would assume probably Pope starts um, given, you know, the the environment that we're in right now. Um, so he, I'm assuming he takes the, the best player. I would take the second best player that frees up Brad to have a, you know, third, fourth, whatever option it is, especially with with Kuz also being a quality defender. So, you know, just, just being another guy that can help in that area, obviously playmaking as well. So just all around, what it, whatever the team needs is, is kind of how I want to try to plug in and play. Just uh, I'll be at a little bit more dominant um, given the increased uh, usage. Right. And how do you approach identifying what the team's philosophy and, and personality will be going into training camp? Like, do you have an approach to that or what you want it to look like or feel like? Um, yeah. So for me, I mean, I think it's about being open. Um, the, the quicker that I can kind of like learn the other players, what they like, um, for example, in a couple, um, pickup games I've, I've identified, obviously Trez loves to play in the short role, obviously Gafford's a lob threat. Like these are all things that are going to, um, make reads different, right. Depending upon the defenses we play, right. If Gafford's a, not as good in the short role, then that means that if I want to get to that, that corner skip pass, and it's probably me making the pass. Um, with Trez, sometimes going to be making that quick pocket and I'm only going to get the hockey assist. So, you know, things are going to look different depending on who you're playing with, who's in the corner. Am I trying to draw the, the defense down so they kind of play the corner pass so they'll no look to the high slot because we have a better three-point shooter there? Um, am I playing with a pick and pop four? Like, what am I doing, Davis? He's going to be different. Is he hunting out, you know, a, a, a wide away screens um, in transition so that he can get his three, you know, and, and, and playing quick pick and rolls or, or not? You know what I mean? It's, there's, there's so much nuance there. Um, and then with Brad, it's just like, get out the way. You know what I mean? Like, how can I best get out of your way? Um, so it's it's just about learning, honestly. And that's my approach to it. And and once you kind of have that down, then that's when you can be uh, more aggressive, more dominant. Because, you know, I think the, the guys also trust you a little bit more to try to make the right decision. And I'm not just going out there just, you know, trying to just spaz all over the game. Right. I love the tactical answer. Thank you so much. No problem. Come on, Quinn. We've been waiting for you. What's good, Spence? I got a quick one. I know you're trying to get out of here. Did you and John ever link on that NFT talk? No, he didn't hit me back, unfortunately. It's missing out. Are you excited about the Socios uh, partnership the team now has? No, I'm not, because I want my company, Galaxy, to buy the jersey patch and 
uh, due to partnership, but the NBA has like rules against, you know, guys not um, having, you know, business deals with ownership or teams and all that stuff, which I thought was a complete crock of BS because like, really, I would have paid full price for it. Like they, they were, I think, selling it for like 12 million or something like that. I was like, bro, like, I will pay that. Like, can I just put my jersey patch? That would be so baller. Like, come to a new team <laughs> in Capitol Hill, put the jersey, the crypto patch on the jersey, yeah. and they shut all that down. So, you know, NBA be hating. It is what it is, though. So we talked to, to Coach Unsell. He said you're in, in great shape. You're right where they need you to be. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm just curious uh, what you did this offseason to get into so great shape. Nah, I worked myself to exhaustion. And that's a Kobe quote, if anybody didn't know. Um, he, that, um, what I really just take from that quote mainly is just the simple fact that he wanted to be better the time that he had said that quote. So, I mean, the mindset with this is just basically coming in and giving my all to the team and me being in shape, that's going to help me out a lot for sure. So just really just working on my craft and working on my body throughout the whole summer. Like I didn't go home at all after the last game when we um, played Philly, Came back, took about a week off, didn't go home, got back into the gym. Um, that was just the main thing. I wanted to be better. Um, I wanted to progress from the season that I, well, the half of the season that I had after I came from Chicago and be able to, you know, put on top of like everything that I did and just build off of that. So that was just my main thing. So I really didn't, like I took a couple of vacation times. I didn't spend the whole summer working. <laughs> you know, I went um, back and forth to a couple of spots you know, with my family and stuff. But other than that, it was just my mindset was to get better throughout the whole summer. Was it just playing hoops or was there like a specific exercise that you worked in? No, I mean, it was a lot. Um, I worked on a lot of footwork. I worked on a lot of, you know, facing up through, um, you know, in, inside of the post if I were to get it down there. Just really just working on my jump shot as well. Working on more and more to build my confidence more and more every day. That was just the main thing. There were times where it was just one-on-one me and like a coach, you know, working on the things that I need to work on to excel my game. Then there were days where I played actually pick up, you know, to work on the things that I have been working on. So a little bit of both. So both of them, both of them were helping me build my confidence as, you know, the days went by. Yeah, you talked to us so much last season about your mindset, just, you know, obviously getting ready for your season and all that. But now, well, it's kind of weird. You were here for a couple months mm-hmm. and pretty much everything changed. But yeah. where is your mind at going into this season? Do you have specific goals other than I just want to get better? Do you feel more settled or are you still kind of learning everything because everyone's new all over again? I, I would say if there was a percentage of what it was, I would say I'm at 95%. You know, the last 5% is when the season gets in. That's my main thing. Once I get through training camp, that's when I'll be fully locked in. Um, Just like... Like I said, like I said, I didn't go home. My mindset was to get in the gym, work on everything I needed to work on to be able to withstand another season and be able to help the team, you know, get to where we wanted to be. And that was back to the playoffs and past the first round and so on and so forth. Uh, Daniel, Justin Kutcher, we never actually met, so it's finally great to meet mm-hmm. you. Nice to meet you TV. too. Um, last year when you got traded here, uh-huh. all of a sudden it was like you got a new opportunity. It looked almost like it was like a new lease on life for your career. Mm. Is that part of the motivation, what you saw, what you could do? And now in the offseason, like, wow, if I if I can do that when I wasn't in shape, what can I do when I'm in shape? Oh, yeah, for sure. Because, I mean, you know, I'm not going to lie. It was at times where I felt like I took a lot of things for granted, especially like being in Chicago and stuff. There were times where I was in a position to be able to show the team what I can do and show how I could help the team. But it's just I never came prepared. And like you said, I was I was I would say I was never in shape when it came down to it. I felt like I was. But when I got out there on the court, it was a whole different story. Everybody seen it. So I had to change the narrative on like what a lot of people were saying, for sure, because there was one tweet that I actually like paid attention to um, before I even got traded. It was like, I was playing myself out of the league and I didn't want that to happen. Not at all. I got a lot of people that are behind me that are pushing me to be the player that I want to be. And I don't want to let them down. So that's just my main focus. Yeah, I'm going to say, I ain't seen a lot of people face it. <laughs> Along those lines, and, and Spencer talked about this, you know, as he comes to a new team wanting to prove the Wizards right, and is that part of this mentality you were just talking about, how hard you work in the summer, you're obviously self-motivated, but also 
it's a team you clearly want to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that was just the main thing, you know, just having the idea in the back of your head that it's like a team out there that actually wanted me. You know, I felt like it, I felt like my only place was Chicago, to be honest, because of how I was playing and how, you know, things were going there. Because, I mean, I was on the bench at one point in time, so on and so forth. But whenever I got out there, you know, it looked like I was, you know, BSing and stuff. You know, I, I got a dunk here, I got a block there, little things. But it never really built up to where I could excel and be the player that I wanted to be in Chicago. So I thought my only place was there. But then to find out that another team wanted me for, you know, a lot more reasons than I thought. I mean, it really helped me out a lot. It helped me boost my confidence. It helped me get out of the dark place that I was in because, like like I said, with the tweet had said, I was playing myself out of the league. I actually thought I was going to be out of the league, you know, before my second year even ended. So, I mean, it was, a lot of, it was a lot of stuff that was, you know, on my mind when I was in Chicago. I was trying to get over it, things like that. But once I got traded to Washington and, you know, I um, talked to all the guys from Chicago, there was never a thought in my mind that was negative about Chicago. I mean, you know, day in, day out, I came in and worked there. I mean, they seen it. And, you know, once they made the trade, I understood because this is a business. You can't really, you know, get too mad and get too butthurt about the business. I was a little hurt at the time, but, I mean, you get over it because sooner or later I'm going to see them again on down the road. It's going to be happy faces and a lot of highs and buys, you know, and then it's going to be the, it's going to be a whole game to be played. So sooner or later I'll see them again. <laughs> Daniel, how um... – how much of your uh, kind of restructuring this summer was due to the fact that you, hey, this starter's minutes available this year, and I'm going to be the starter, and I need to be ready for that? Um, if we being honest, and this is just me being completely honest, I wasn't really just worrying about starting. I was just really just worrying about, you know, being out there on the floor. You know, I can start, through, I can start throughout all any of the games that we play, you know, but to be honest, I just want to be on the floor. Um, that's the main thing, being out there to be able to help the team. Uh, like a starting job, I'm all for that. I appreciate that, you know, the, I would say confidence that they have in me. I appreciate that a lot. But um, when it comes to starting, I, it really doesn't even matter. I start or I play on the bench. Whatever you have me, whatever job you have me do, I'll do it. Plain and simple. As long as I get playing time to be able to go out and help my team win. Also, um, during last season, it was, you were talking about, Wind and losing, not being able to sustain the wind. And was, there was some. Did you ever look and check and see if it was sports asthma or anything like that, or was it just I just need to be in better shape? Yeah, it was just I just needed to be in better shape. Plain and simple. You know, the tempo of an NBA game is way faster than what I would say I'm usually used to. Because when it comes to when it came from college and stuff, when I was telling everybody at first with all the interviews and stuff, they were like, how's the pace and how have you adjusted? I always said I was good, but I got on the floor. I was not that I was not that good at all. <laughs> so um, just taking some steps back and just realizing that it helps a lot because it was a lot of things that I can really just focus on working on to be able to help my win and stuff coming into this next season. Just to clarify, this tweet that has motivated you, was that just from some random fan or was it from like a member of the media? I think it, it was actually from a lot. I'm pretty sure Arkansas Razorback fan. <laughs> you know, Arkansas, Arkansas Razorback fans are by far the best fans that a person could really have because they can motivate you and they can put you down at the same time. <laughs> but I mean, I appreciate it because it was one of the people that really motivated me when I was back at Arkansas and just seeing them say that it really just, you know, brought something out of me it was like, yeah, sooner or later, I mean, something's going to have to click with me to where I can be able to withstand multiple seasons in the NBA, because that's what I want to do. I want to play this game. I dreamed of, being in this position all my life, well, half my life, because at first I was playing instruments and stuff like that, but that's another story. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it wasn't really just like a random person because once I seen it, I was like, yeah, I know who it was. I liked it and everything. I even saved it in my tweets, so. Stay away from those people. Don't know. <laughs> Trust me, um, you, you mentioned your workouts this summer mm -hmm. and how it was motivated, what Kobe said. And then you got a chance to play with Russell Westbrook last year. He's known for his work ethic. Mm -hmm. What did you learn from playing with Russ with his work ethic? And what did you learn from those workouts that you were trying to like almost be Kobe in those workouts? Just staying consistent and working for the results that you really want. And I actually got the results thing. I actually got that from anime. 
<laughs> um, um, just really just working for results. Like I um intertwine a lot of things that happen around me and I use it for motivation to be able to withstand like workouts or anything like that to help me, you know, build my craft, certain things like that it helps me learn like a lot of stuff on the court and off the court, to be honest. So just working for the results that I wanted was like my main focus, not working for, you know, I always say stuff about the team and everything like that, but summertime, that's my time. And working on my craft and everything, that's what I used my time to do. So I worked for the results and I got the results that I wanted. Hey Daniel, good to see you again. Um, in addition to just, you know, general conditioning, what are some of the other things that you and, you know, I know you work closely with Alex, uh, mm -hmm. try to implement into your game this off season? Just really slowing down the pace of the game whenever the ball was in my hands, you know, not going too fast, not taking uncomfortable shots and being on balance and having a strong base and just main, pretty much mainly like simple things that'll help me slow the game down for myself. And maybe this is, you know, still to come as you guys grow closer as a team, but have you ha gotten any advice from Montrez Harrell, um, you know, just being a veteran center in this league that you think can help your game? Yeah, for sure. The main thing he says is stay locked in. That's pretty much it. <laughs> cool. Appreciate it, Daniel. No problem. I can't, is that me? I can't hear you. All right. Hey, Daniel, it's uh, Glenn Contour. I am the radio color analyst and, and TV as well at times. Um, you, you mentioned how you're, you know, you're in this position in your career where you're learning what it takes to be a pro. You're learning about your body, what you need to do to stay in great shape, uh, the shape that you need to be in to play and stay on the floor. Mm -hmm. um, there's also skill development too uh, that's going to take time. You're in that learning phase. Right. If you were coaching you, how would you coach you right now? Like um, going into this season? That yeah. you mean like, okay. Right, um, right now. How, what, 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 best, what are the best ways for you to learn? How, you know, if you were coaching yourself in games, um, what would be the best way to coach you? Main thing I would tell myself is to slow down, you know, um, like a, a person like me, my mind goes a thousand miles per hour whenever I'm playing, to be honest. And so just the main thing I would tell myself is just to slow down and let the game come to you. Don't go out and try to take it, because if you do, you're not going to get the result that you want. If you slow down and just take your time and be patient with the process. I mean, the process is going to give you what you want in the end. And there's a lot of learning involved uh, in the NBA, in learning schemes and, and where to be and how to cut and when to cut and right. defensively as well. What's the best ways for you to learn? Is it being pulled aside? Is it during in-game action? You know, is it a combination? I mean, just your thoughts on that. Really just for me, just taking the time out and actually going to learn instead of just, you know, being pulled aside, certain things like that. Because sometimes with me, you know, it's rare for me to be pulled aside and get pointers and stuff. So I take it upon myself to actually go get those pointers, you know, by myself. Like if, if there was a foul in the game and I'm trying to figure out how to keep myself from getting that foul, it was the footage of like me going to talk to a ref. Like those are like the main things that I do. Like I'll go ask like, hey, how can I not get this foul or, how can I get this foul? You know, if somebody fouls me on offense and I don't get the foul, which I mean, they need to do better on that anyways, but that's another story. <laughs> but um, just little things like that, just, you know, taking accountability of yourself and actually going to talk to people and learning in your own way. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Last question to Jada Shaw. I'm assuming you said my name. I couldn't really hear that well, but how are you, Daniel? Um, uh, welcome to a, another season with the Wizards this year. What, what do you look forward to most this season? I mean, I think as the season progressed last year, you know, you were beginning to be a, a favorite amongst, you know, D.C. And, you know, what do you look forward to taking what you've learned from last season going into this season this year? Um, main thing I'm looking forward to is just coming out in front of another crowd, hopefully, 
you know, with this COVID stuff going on, hopefully we got fans in the building, but, you know, I'm not going to have my hopes up. <laughs> but um, other than that, just being back in the arena and just playing a whole nother full season, because, I mean, I miss basketball, even though I've been going throughout all summer with a basketball in my hand. It's, it's totally different just being in an arena and just playing for something, you know, trying to get back in the position that we were in last year in that first round. I mean, we want to get back to that. So that's the main focus. How are you doing? How's the, the rehab going? I don't think we've talked to you in quite a while. I'm doing good. Rehab is doing real good. Uh, I feel like I'm at a great place physically and mentally, especially coming off the injury and uh, how close I am to, to just, you know, just having everything down the line, up to par and feeling great is, is right there. Last season was a complete roller coaster for this team. I mean, obviously down 15 games and 17 and six. What was that like from your perspective, like being part of the team, technically, you know, being on the bench, but not being in there? I mean, it must have been pretty wild. Well, yeah, it was tough you know, when the injury came and, you know, just being on the sidelines and not being able to help my team out, you know, just trying to be there mentally for them uh, any way possible that I can on the sidelines, cheering for them, being there as a good teammate. Uh, it was tough. It was it was a very big mental game for me, you know, throughout that season. That's kind of what I was going to ask you, Thomas, is especially with an injury where the recovery time is so long, or I'm sure like some months you're feeling great and then some months are harder than others. Have you mastered kind of staying the course and making sure you don't <laughs> rush back and, and being good with your mindset and everything like that? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I had to do that a lot, especially coming off the surgery with the uh, just how everything was just very monologue is very technique and you just have to be patient you know that that injury right there forces you to have mental patience and uh it's forced you to have mental toughness and learn how to you know work with your body learn what learn what's good for you what's not good for you and how far you can pace yourself and what you can do to you know really try and help yourself to get to the next level i'm sure you're looking at the kind of roster calls into place and if you're acquiring guys every offseason. What's been the message um, from the coaching staff in terms of what you need to be focused on right now? Uh, message from the coaching staff really is just trying to get out there and be better. Uh, the main thing was just coming off this injury and being healthy, making sure everything stays healthy, everything is down and packed, and making sure everything is real good coming through the season. We don't want no holdups or any mishaps or any anything that might come off at the, <laughs> at the back end. So we want to make sure everything is straight down to a T and making sure I'm healthy to come back. Thomas, it's, it's great to see you again. Um, you've had injuries in the past. Two years ago, you missed time. But when you had that, when, when it was the ACL, and you know you're going to be out for a year, basketball all of a sudden is taken away from you. Mm. When that happens, does it almost increase your love for the game and realize like how much you miss it? Or, or what is it? How do you get through that mental hurdle when you know that you're going to be out for the year? <laughs> well, for me, I take it on as as a as different. You know, there's going to be a lot of obstacles that people face throughout their lives. You know, some people might handle it better than others. Some people might not handle it better than others. But either way, you have, but either way, you know, it's the, it's the card you're dealt. It's the hand that you it's the hand you have to play. So you have to play the best way you can. And for me, quitting is just not an option. Uh, breaking down and letting something get the best of me is, isn't the option. So for me, I had to dig down deep and learn to learn to mentally overcome this challenge. And also, it did give me a, a new profound respect and love for the game of basketball. And you know, when it's when it's taken away from you, it's very hard to deal with. It's very hard because that's like the one love that you have in your life right there. It's the one thing that's always been there, always intact that you know that you can always go to. So when that when that's taken away from you, it's very hard. It's almost depressing <laughs> in a sort of way. But when you're mentally strong and you know you keep talking to yourself, working with yourself and everything, the days don't get so much harder, they get a little bit easier. Not saying that they're fully easy where it's walking the park, but it's days where it's mentally challenging and you overcome that hurdle. You like you you feel a newfound perspective of everything, and just knowing how you're so close to the finish line, it just builds up more anticipation right there to to where you just want to be out there and you just have to try and pace yourself. But 
yeah, the newfound love of the game has really, really, really erupted in me. So, thank you. In that case, I can't wait to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Along those lines, I mean, there's a cliche about, you know, don't let a crisis go to, go to waste. And it sounds like um, you took full advantage. Do you, you feel in some ways you're, you're better or stronger? Not that you've ever want to go. Mm -hmm. Uh, through this or by design, but it, as you said, it was a, a card you were dealt. But so, what did you, you know, learn about yourself over the last few months, and, and maybe learn about basketball not so much the love, but just as you were forced to watch it in a different way? Oh yeah, uh, being forced to watch it got me a lot into the film sessions, even more than I was before. So, just looking at different aspects of the game, looking at different players, looking at myself, looking at past, looking at past games up-to-date games, and just also really trying to overcome this real big, like this real big thing. But for me, I felt like I've grown absolutely better than what I was before. Uh, very, very, very aware, very, very aware of my body, what it needs, how it's supposed to move, how it's supposed to, you know, be the machine for me. So. I really feel like it was a blessing in disguise for me. So that's what I'm taking it as, and that's what I'm going to run with it as. <laughs> hey, Thomas, when you, when you get back on the floor, this is a completely different team than the one you left in, in the old ways. I just wonder, have you kind of thought about, this is how I can fit in, this is, my, this, is the, this is a good role for me, I know what, this is how I can help him? Well, for me, I feel everything that I was doing up to now, it's going to help me with this team. And I feel like we have a lot of great pieces, a lot of great pieces. We have a lot of threats that can be out there on the court multiple times. And the one thing I noticed about this team is that we're not, we're not head cases. We don't think about anything else except the team. Like right now we're all talking in our group chat, you know, trying to build some chemistry and everything. So that's a great start for us. And for me personally, I feel, you know, if I can, when I get back to getting out there playing, it'll just flow right through. It'll be right there. You, uh, right before you got injured, you kind of developed into one of the more accurate three point shooters uh, from your position. Um, what's kind of the next step that you hope to move forward with in, in that regard when it comes to outside shooting? Well, for me, the outside shooting is consistency. You know, I want to be consistent in everything, no matter if it's, you know, one game, 10 games, 20 games, it's 82 game season. I want to build that consistency up for the longevity of the long season. So for me, it was that. And also when I was in injury, it was just multiple times of just shooting, stand still shooting, whether I was in a chair, standing up, anything like that. So I think that helped a lot too. <laughs> and uh, this this isn't the first time you've gone into a contract year. Last mm -hmm. time, obviously, it worked out really well for you. Um, what, what do you kind of take from that experience going into this time? Because obviously, sometimes it can be difficult for players. On that. I don't think about that. I go into this game, playing a game that I love each and every day, trying to trying to go in, help my team. No matter if it's a contract year or I've just signed a deal, it doesn't matter. You know, you can't have that mindset right then and there. For me, for myself personally, it's just another day in the office. I don't take it as I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. I got to do that. It's contract year, this or that. Like, no, you can't get caught up into that. You'll lose yourself into that. I want to stay right here and present with myself and my team. And I guess um, maybe following up on a question I asked earlier. So what's uh, specifically where you at in, in the rehab in terms of like working towards your return? Because Tommy and others have indicated it might be in mid-December. So kind of like, what's the road from here you think? It's close. It's very close. I wouldn't say mid-December, but it's close. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll uh, transition over to Zoom here. Christy? Hey, Thomas. Um, just kind of expounding on that point with the rehab, and you're going through it, trying to get your body back. You said your mind is in a great place as well, but what has been the biggest hurdle for you in terms of the pain threshold like when do you know that okay that's enough for today because you're super competitive so how do you pump the brakes on how your body is feeling <laughs> it's funny the trainers have to tell me that i don't really put any brakes on it because for me my mindset is just 
work. I don't have anything else outside of my mind distracting me or anything else. So my my one place is the gym. My one place is the weight room. My one place is, you know, working out, trying to get better. So it's, for me, it's just getting back to that threshold of just no matter what you're, you go out there and do what you have to do. No matter if you're in pain, no matter if you're tired, stress or anything else like that. But I think it's on the trainers, really. I don't really put any brakes on it. <laughs> understood, understood. And and with Wes Unsell Jr., understanding that he's going to come in with a, a defensive mindset initially, what does that mean for the team? And, and what do you want the team eventually to identify with in terms of the overall personality? I believe that's great. I believe that's absolutely fantastic for us. Uh, as many times as many people said, and you guys all know, we clean up a little bit of defense, we we win a lot more games. So I feel like that's a great mindset to have, especially coming in a training camp into the in, into the season. Thank you. Thomas, um, Sigilfredo Franco from Colombia. Um, how do you like uh, Jaime Chenique performance during training camp? Oh, excuse me, one more time. Jaime Chenique. How do you like Jaime Chenique performance during training camp? <laughs> I like Excuse him a lot. I like him a lot. I think he's a great piece. It helps us a lot. Hey, JB. Good to see you. Um, you're into, you know, a lot of interesting non-basketball hobbies. Um, I'm curious, you know, with the time off, did you pick up any new hobbies? <laughs> I really haven't picked up really any new hobbies, really. Uh, for me, it's just getting back into drawing a little bit more, but for me, it's other than that and resting, it's all about rehab and getting back to it. Like that's really my whole thing that I've done since the injury and throughout the summer was just straightforward tunnel vision mindset of just getting back and working on this left leg to get back to it. Fair enough. You'll have to ask Contavious. He said he's a bit of a drawer too. Oh, for sure. <laughs> 